Is this a? It's an add-on. You add said it's an add-on, and like add-on number one because the date is June twenty-sixth of fourteen. Whoa! I gave you the wrong one. I am. Okay. <clears throat> oh my God. Um, I'm so sorry. Miss Wheeler, you had something as it relates to executive session <laughs> request. Um, yes, there will be an executive session on the agenda. I can't hold up now. Listen, listen. I mean, you got to talk, but just kind of really whisper. Go ahead, Miss Wheeler. Yes, there's supposed to be an executive session on the agenda for um, Paladino matter. For what? Paladino. Tony Paladino thing. So an executive session is requested. We also had President Galloway and I talk, um, and we talking a lot, and it's good. Um, but it was also, Ms. Galloway, a we talked about executive session requests as it relates to confidential memos and documentations, Mr. Davis, that's going out through individuals in the community and they showing up on Facebook and different places that's just tripping me out. So we're going to talk about that and some personnel issues in this executive session as well. Um, and and so I don't mind an executive session, Miss Wheeler, but they would those two type of items would be requested on there as well. So which one is? You've got some memos going out um, from the mayor's office to individuals, and it might be totally legal, and we can discuss it in detail in an open session. Mr. Edwards is here; they coming from his email. We looking at that and they're getting out and we will discuss the specifics but if there's some confidentiality or some things that's said because our staff is telling us emails um certain emails tell us about um confidentiality you might know the law better than we do as it relates to that and i'm gonna try to nip some things in the bud but if that's the way we want to play politics in the city of Flint, I'm up for it. And so that discussion, open or closed, got to happen. And then we've had some personnel issues, and they all fall into the same bank. We had an employee in finance um, shoot out a communication, and that communication also showed up to the same folks, and it's a personnel issue. It's a personnel issue, and so you'll tell us whether or not that requires executive session. You need more detail. Well, what I was going to say is if you, if you want something in a closed session, then it may be best to, to make a referral for a legal opinion because it needs to have something right that's covered by state or federal law to to have it covered. We understand that it's five or six or four categories which we can request executive sessions, so forth and so on. And the personnel issue, whether it's me being criticized, if I want an executive session, or I can talk about my personnel issues in open session. We do understand that. But as you requested the executive session for the Paladino case, this is a discussion among council and uh, whether we have the vote to add that on or not will be a different thing. But those issues have to be discussed. Ms. Galloway. So, Ms. Wheeler, did you want the executive session immediately following um, the change or additions to the? Yes, please. I wouldn't put it there, Ms. Galloway. I'm um, I would, but I, I would know like it at in the, the earlier part of the meeting. I would like it at the beginning of the meeting so that uh, our outside council is here, does not have to stay at no. work for the entire meeting as well. In line with what Ms. Fields was saying, we've got something that's going to be probably done first, and then after that, we'll. I'll, I'd like to entertain the executive um, session. One other, I, 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 there was another executive session that we have made a request for. I don't see the attorneys here for, but in the event that, that they do appear, they may have had some some issues that came up. But I would like to also put on there uh, the Matthews case. That was another one that was going to be an executive so session. So Paladino and the Matthews. Yeah, in the case. event that the the uh, other uh, attorney. Um, 
does come here, we're not to ask again for And Matthew's this. Yeah, Ms. Galloway, so, President Galloway. So will we, um, <coughs> once we're ready, do we make a motion to do the executive session to the field and then go to the next one? No, um, I want to see what I'm looking at. And, you know, at the top, I was looking at the audit discussions we've had and that communication and then the executive session. Ms. Fields seemed to be headed some way, but she wanted the whole new business. And she said she wants to vote on that without revealing the particulars. I'm not down with that. I'm going to see what the council says. Go ahead. And I don't, I don't need to talk about, I mean, the, the audit. We're having a special meeting that's going to be tied to the audit, and so I won't. Find well, you don't have to, but I, I will do it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm yeah. just saying um, I will we are do going it. to have a special meeting. Yeah, that's going. That's the uh, request that I got to bring the council yeah. up to speed on the audit <coughs> and and give the dates and discuss when we will have a special meeting as it relates to the audit. And that was a request for just Mr. Chair, that was at the request of the auditor. The I'll get into it. I don't want to get into it now. You say you didn't want, I'm telling you, it's some discussion needed, President Galloway, as you well know. And if I have to handle it all myself, I will. But you know what's being said. That's why you were chiming in. So this is just a change um, in addition to the agenda. Ms. Fields, um, now have anybody got any objections to the changes that's been discussed so far? And so what I'm going to do is miss it. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't have any objections, but my question to my colleagues is, is, is the new business all of new business? That's what I'm thinking. Or is it into. something specific in new business? If there are four things that, I mean, if there's just a bunch of new business stuff, I really don't want to do a bunch. But if there is one specific thing or two specific things that you need, I would like to know what I'm voting on. Ms. Fields, you got the floor. And you can I make a motion at any time, whether it's passed or failed, but based upon the discussion we've had as it relates to the agenda change and what you've said, you got the floor. I'd like to say, is, uh, I have a question first about the executive session. Number one, if the attorneys had requested it, I'm wondering why it wasn't on our agenda because we've been very careful to make sure that... Ms. Field, point of order, I'd like for you to direct those questions to the chair, and maybe you were doing that, but I'll respond. Go ahead. Normally, any executive session we've had, we've been very careful to make sure that it's on the agenda, so there's sufficient public notice, and there's also sufficient... Uh, it's been noted that a closed session meets the criteria, okay, under the um, Open Meetings Act. And so, uh, okay. number one, I would like to know, through the chair to Angela, whether she had submitted that information to council, and then after she responds to somebody in council, why that is on the agenda. Okay, uh, Ms. Fields, um, the best way to do that sometime, I'm going to honor your request to me to um, Angela Wheel. I already know the answer, and we could save a lot of time. Um, go ahead, Ms. Wheeler. Did you hear her question? Yes, uh, we did make the request for both executive sessions in advance. And who did you make them through? Um, they go to, um, I have to look at the email, but usually I, I believe it goes to the city clerk and city clerk's staff. So. Do anybody in the clerk's office familiar with that advance request, Janelle? No, we're not. We're, we're the three of us here don't remember getting anything, but we are checking right now to see. Okay, something so must have gone continue, Miss Fields. That answer will be coming shortly. I heard not about it, and um, if the staff did hear about it and it wasn't on there, so no harm, no foul, because this council can at any time request an executive session and whether it's an add-on from the administration whether it's a request from the city attorney's office as long as we get it done we can do it and we'll probably prove that today what else did you say continue miss fields you've got the floor. well whether it whether we can or not the question is whether we should 
And I don't know if timeliness is of the essence in these executive sessions because Ms. Wheeler noted that the, the council was here okay. about this. Okay, Ms. Bill, we will have that discussion when the motion for an executive session is made. Right now we are on agenda changes. We've on top of that. Can you proceed with your agenda change? I'd like to state that I have two items I would like to discuss before public speaking and then uh, additional new business could be near the end of the agenda. It's okay with me after, uh, if we have any ordinances, but after resolutions. Uh, but two I items. have two. Uh, one I want to talk about. Um, these properties and I need this bit of information shared with council before we actually get to the resolutions uh, and the other thing is I just have some generic Hold up, I got, you got to take me one step at a time if you will mm -hmm. indulge me the properties are on the agenda right so you really want to move resolutions no you just want to talk about it I have an I item that's related to but You're talking about the foreclosure notice program stuff coming up tomorrow that we got a memo on. Is that what you're talking about? Okay. No. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably say we can talk about it. How long do that take? I, I don't know how long it'll take. I have no problem with it. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, the other one is just a, 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 just a couple of generic questions. Uh, and comments about um, the audit, even though I'm aware that we are going to have an audit presentation. So, so I don't we want to get into anything page. in detail, but I do have just some generic things. So I would be happy with two items of new business prior to public speaking, because I think the public needs to have access to the information in case they want to speak on it. And then some other items, including referrals, um, like you make prior to the end of resolutions. Or excuse me, right at the prior to discussion items. Now, did you just say something about referrals? Yes. And when and where did you want that at? That could be with the new business uh, right, just before discussion items. So new business B. So new well, business uh, A me, and new let, business let me, B. Let me get that. Now, it's going to all be new business because you can do referrals under new business. If you're here, you'll be able to do your referrals under new business. I don't need a new business A and a new business B. All I need is for new business and you do your referrals. Is that okay? That's okay. Unless you object. I don't need a new business A or new Those business. are the, the uh, agenda changes that I would like. A new business A and a new business B? Well, since you wanted Mr. Winfrey made a request, he'd like me to separate them. So. Well, I think you cured that request because you say you want to talk one about the audit and the other a little short thing about the properties. Am I understanding that? Those are the two things I want to talk about in the beginning and then at the end of the agenda prior to after resolutions, I have some additional referrals and some stuff I want to Under talk new about. Under new business. And yes. so if that's, if, am I understanding that? Well, I've explained it three times. I and I've understood it four times. I've been understood. Let me say this. Um, you'll get a chance to do the audit because I want to do that as well. So we both agree on that before public speaking. And I have no objections with you dealing with the um, <laughs> communications about the properties prior to us getting to that on the agenda. Everybody understand what's being said? Uh, Ms. Galloway, President Galloway. I, I don't want to support, you know, I, I don't mind as having that dialogue after executive session. When I saw the attorney here, I said to Mr. Winfrey, oh, do we have an executive session? And so I would hope that my colleagues would be willing to honor his time. I don't think it should t take that long. And so I'd hate to um, vote on this and, and I won't be supporting it if the executive session is not fair because that's that's business that an outside attorney, and I mean, whether it made it to it, if it's about the Palladino case, we know that it fits the criteria because we've gone into executive session and I'm sure attorney Wheeler will state it for the record. And so just for me, I would like to honor since he's here um, to, to, to clear And you have the same feelings about the Matthews request. 
Do you have the same feeling about the other personnel issue and stuff we requested if it fits? I would be fine with that, but that could be later. It doesn't matter. I mean, we can do it. Okay, well, I don't care if we do it in January, February, or March. My thing is this. When I come to council meeting, I'm here to take care of the council business. I'll see that attorney there, but he ain't going to be priority over the audit to me because it's been press releases and everything. And when we move the people out of here for executive session, you see them people outside, I'm going to ask that we set up so everybody can be in his pool. Okay. Okay, so wherever, whenever the executive session hit, I talked to Davina about it earlier. Maybe it'll go away, but Davina, what we talked earlier, if I see Suzanne Wilcox, Brian Locker, and them, and Adam Ford, and Chris Del Maroney, and people outside want in, then we moved outside when we moved from the executive session. So while we're in executive session, I would ask staff to set up outside. Now, there's usually more people at the beginning than the end, but now here we go. We at a point where if there's any misunderstanding about these agenda changes, speak now before the vote or forever hold your peace. Ms. Fields. I have no problem other than the fact that I hope it doesn't create a precedence uh, for an executive session without it being in writing on our agenda ahead of time. Uh, upon the assurance from Ms. Wheeler that these are, uh, they meet the criteria for a closed session because they're pending litigation. We did. Ms. Fields, uh, Ms. Ms. Wheeler, you out of order a little bit. I'm sorry. Let me say this. Ms. Fields, it ain't no president being set. That president has been set. We've come in here and we voted to go in executive session. Ms. Wheeler then said it three, four times that we have that right to do. Understand this, Ms. Fields. The vote of the council, the majority of vote of the council can do add-ons. It can go into executive sessions. It can subpoena folks. That's our job. Ms. Wheeler, do you want to respond to what she said? You have the floor. And no, I'll no, be I just, what I just said. I just want to, to let you know that we did make a request in, in writing. I can't hear you, Ms. Wheeler. Can you move closer so we, we, we record this? We want the people to hear. I can hardly hear. If you don't mind, I'm not being funny. I'm just trying to take care of this. No, I just want to let you know that, that we did call the protocol to make a request in advance. Um, that was done in this case. Um, what was your other question? I just want to insurance she, she, on she the don't say she don't want to set a precedent that the council votes to go in executive session versus it's on the agenda already. I say we done did that before and I wanted you to expound on the opportunity and has it been a precedent if we do it tonight. The law allows us to vote to go in executive session whether it's on the agenda or not. Would that be a fair statement? That, that's a fair statement, but we do like to put it in writing, you know, to make sure that everyone is aware of it. So that that would be our normal procedure. In a perfect world, we wouldn't have add-on. Right. In a perfect world, this council, you know, have to be ready to act based upon the city business. If Trump and Iran get to blowing up people, I'm going to act, and I'm going to ask that we get the hell out of here. So, in a perfect world, everything would be on the agenda in writing in advance. But we're running a multi-million dollar corporation, and I don't want to nitpick about how we vote and how we do. A majority vote of this council could have already been to decide where we at now. Ms. Worthy. I make a motion due to the lack of space in the committee room to have our committee meeting in city council chambers, this meeting and all future meetings. Support. Uh, you out of order, Mr. Del Maroney, and I don't want this to turn into what some call a clown show. That's your first one. Now, I'm just telling you, it's been a motion put on the floor to hold this council meeting and all of them out on the floor. Is there a second? Point of order, we ain't in discussion, Ms. Worthy. This motion dies for a lack of a second. Ms. Galloway? Um, Mr. Chair, I, I thought you said that after we, while we're going into executive session, that our staff was set up. 
so that after we end the executive session, we would go out on the floor. That's for this meeting. Her motion was fair. It said this meeting and the rest. It died for a lack of a second. So is everybody straight on the agenda changes? Do we need a recap? Ms. Fields? No, but we just need to add to the agenda the this add-on. Add and the add-on would come in the add -on resolutions, add-on number one. We would call it add-on number one, and it's the um, dealing with what was that, the park? The, the maintenance of the park. Who passed that out? I got I got the maintenance of the park thing. They done replaced it. You passed out the wrong one. So where's the old one I just labeled add on number one? Y'all killing the chair. You got it? And so now we got another one. So the other one is coming when? Will we ever see it? No, you don't have another one. No, the one about the parks. I thought that was interesting. No, that's background information that I should have passed out. Yet. Okay, they're talking about maintaining Max Brandon Park. I guess. Okay, so Ms. Fields, this is a resolution authorizing Lighthouse Group LLC, and we're going to put it in there with resolution, and we're going to tag it or label it now as add on number one. And for the public, this is a resolution authorizing the Lighthouse Group to provide access liability coverage. Um, and anybody in the public who want to see it before they speak, you're welcome to come and get a copy from the chair. That'll save us from putting that before public speak. Any more discussion? All in favor of these agenda changes signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? So that vote carries um, seven to zero. Okay. Um, do y'all know whether we decided the executive session was first or second? Do, did I separate that? First, you said first. First is fine. I didn't say it was first. You did. You said I said audit. the audit discussion would be before the executive session. That's what I said. And that, that's what I said initially. So we voted on the agenda change. We agree <coughs> on that. Now let's I'll entertain a motion as it relates to agenda changes, Ms. Galway. Let me finish and then I'll give you the floor. You can say what you want. I want to entertain a motion as to what's going to go first. The discussion items me and Ms. Fields talked about or the executive session. Ms. Galloway, you got the floor. So before you, you originally said that, but then you said we could go into executive session. While we were in executive session, our staff could set up out there because there were a lot of people here. And then when we got done with the executive session, we would be out on the floor. Ms. Galloway, you heard me say that after the executive session, while we're in it, they'll set up there. You didn't hear me say, which would be first. So that's really right what you said, but you assuming that's what I <coughs> meant. So I, what do I want to go first, the executive session or the discussion items of the audit and the properties? Mr. Bates, can I be executive heard session. Can I be heard before a motion on that? No, not executive right now, please. Session. Okay, so I'll entertain a motion because it looks like you got enough where the, another way wouldn't pass. Ain't but seven of us here. I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session. Ms. Galloway. I make a motion that we go into executive session. Um, um, the point of order. It's been a motion made to go in executive session. Is there a second, Mr. Second. Griggs? Mr. Griggs, second that motion. Um, it's been moved and second. Now I'll give you the courtesy. Is it something you want to say, sir? I was just going to let you know that I'm supposed to leave at about 6.30 to go teach some Boy Scouts. And okay, and so you should be fine. Thank you, sir. I knew we would get into discussion. I don't want attorneys or nobody just blurting out and interrupting this council. I understand. Okay? Don't do that. Just raise your hand and I'll see you. But don't just jump out. Miss Brown, I gotta do that. That's how it's gonna be. People can shake their head, but I gotta do that. 
um, so maybe you was talking about something else. I'm looking at Woodson and others, and I'm like, Don't start I'm going to share this meeting. Miss Galloway, go ahead. Mr. Mays, um, are we going to hear from the attorney for the records first? We will. Well, I mean, you should read for the record the information. We'll get there. We end discussion on the motion. Ms. Wheeler, Ms. President Galloway wants you to be recognized so you can say what this is for the record, repeat what it is. And Ms. Galloway, this discussion also not includes um, Matthews and Palladino. When we go in that executive session, I don't want to be hindered if we have to. Now, if y'all want to settle during discussion on what this is when she put it on the record, then scrap the other. And unlike what Ms. Galloway was saying, if it comes up on the personnel issues or anything else, then we'll get into that as well. Ms. Galloway, you want to be recognized. You got the floor. I just wanted to say, normally, I, I, I think I moved too fast, normally the attorney says the case number, and, and that they're requested, and then we say, I'd like to make a motion to go into executive session based on what the attorney just said. And so I didn't say that. That's the reason why I wanted to. We've done here. it both ways, and it can be done both ways. It can be done in discussion, and it can be done prior to the motion made. It's a no harm, no foul. Any more discussion from counsel before I call on Ms. Wheeler for the record? What you say, Ms. Gavin? Okay, Ms. Wheeler. Would you put your request to go in executive session on the record? Yes. Um, and the reasons why? Yes, City Attorney's Office requesting executive Can session. Can you come closer? Yes, City Attorney's Office requesting to go into a closed session for purposes of discussing pending civil litigation. And since having an open meeting would have a detrimental effect, we would request that in the matter of Palladino um, et al. versus uh, City of Clint, case number 18CV. 11165 and also in the matter of Phil Matthews and I will get you the case number. Um, get a whole name of the case. The Phil Matthews versus City of Flint. Phil Matthews versus, versus the City, City of, Flint. of Flint. Yes. And that's pending litigation discussion in an open session could have a detrimental effect. That is correct. Miss 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 Wheeler. If we discuss internal personnel issues, do that require executive session? What's the standard on that? Do you know? It depends on what it is, um, because we have a couple things. You got an employee um, or a staff person in the finance department that issued a memo as it relates to me, and as we were doing our audit. I can't make a decision until I see what it is. Okay. So I need to see what it is first before I can. Pass on it. Okay, then read the four or five reasons if you can pull them up before this discussion in that we can go in the executive session and we can make that decision. Because see, the easy way out is to say, I don't know. But I can give you specifics and so can the people in administration. And the other um, executive session issue would have been um, emails and confidential memos. Do you know whether or not? Um, emails fall in the confidential memos. I, I can tell you this is it. Whenever we go to the executive session under the state law, it has to be for one of those enumerated reasons. One of those being an ex exemption that's carved out under state or federal law. So it needs to be one of those. And without seeing the information, I cannot tell you, but it needs to have something that's in writing. And I think this is the same issue we had with another another item that came up Ms. and we put a we put a document together in writing for Ms. Wheeler, have session. you come to me with something in writing about Matthews and or um, Paladino case? No, that doesn't count for those. Those are pending civil litigation, which is another exemption. So give me another reason for um, executive session. Do you know off the top of your head? I do. I I'm asking you, you to tell me the reasons no, that gonna, you know. I don't want to guess, so. But I, you can pull it up right there on your computer. I don't have it right now. I can sit down and get you it. You want us to take a five-minute recess? No, I really I don't. Will. I would okay. rather you tell us what we're asking about the four or five reasons we can go into like executive session. I said, session. I don't have a problem telling you. I would ask that we take a five-minute recess or ten minutes without objection until Ms. Wheeler can give us the legal information we requested. So on. Ms. Wheeler, we'll wait. <laughs> I would 
Hey y'all, uh, this is going for a live ride tonight. <laughs> Your mic's alive. Your stream is still live. Okay. Oh my God, be listening to the Flintstones. You ever never do. Hey y'all, uh, hey uh, Paul didn't learn to keep his uh, video on too. He needs he needs some viewers. <laughs> oh, Your microphone is live. Um, Miss Wheeler has the information. I notified Miss Fields that we was calling back to order whether she proceeded or came back from the elevator. A hundred percent, she heard. Um, Miss Wheeler, the floor is yours. You are ready to start. Yeah, um, it's under fifteen uh, point two six eight MCL fifteen point two six. Did you hesitate a minute? Ms. Fields, are you coming in? Yes. I want everybody to hear it. We'll wait. I'm quite aware of the exceptions, but thank you. Okay, you're welcome. I'm aware of them too. Now I want everybody to hear them because we got some decisions to make. So the first section under MCL 15.26A um, A discusses consider the dismissal, the, the suspension, disciplining, or to hear complaints or charges brought against, or to consider a periodic personnel evaluation of a public officer, employee, staff member, or individual if the named person requests a closed session. So you, did y'all hear that and y'all understand it? In this one, I could be a named person and I can request an executive session. Y'all understand that? If mm -hmm. I'm interpreting that right, Right, based which, on whatever the circumstances is. Right, which means the person who is affected would need to be aware that they may make that and decision. And I could be affected. I believe the employee could be affected, but in fact, I could be affected. So under the circumstances of the communications that went out from an employee in finance as it relates to me doing that audit, I'll be requesting we talk about that in executive session under that roof. Keep reading the other route. That, that, so you know, if, like I said, first we need to be able to determine from what you have if it qualifies for that. How many times have I been arrested in council meetings? I know what qualifies when it relates to me. And so, believe me, if I, if we, well, me and Miss Galloway already know and the memo been on Facebook, I understand, and people in here know. Now, whatever discussion we need to know about it, but it does relate to um, folks making complaints. Can you read that again? Didn't you say a complaint? <clears throat> read it. It says, uh, you have to read it all together. It says here to consider the dismissal, suspension, or disciplining or to hear complaints or charges brought against, or to consider periodic personnel evaluation of a public officer, employee, staff member, or individual agent, 
if the named person requested request the closed hearing. A person requesting a closed hearing may rescind the request at any time in which the case in which, in which case the matter at issue shall be considered after recension only in open session. So are you familiar with the complaint that was made from by somebody in finance about me? I don't know specifically um, what you're speaking of. Okay, so the wanna, answer is no. But what I'm saying is I don't want to misspeak because, like I said, if, if and like I said, I'd rather see what it is you're speaking of first. Okay, well, you so the answer is you're not familiar with the complaint. I don't know specifically what you're speaking of. We talking about a complaint that was made. You got a, you got it, Miss Galloway. Yeah. yeah, can you pull it up and share it? And you can read Mr. it out Chair. loud if you want to. Ms. Fields. Call for orders of the day. You we, had asked uh, Ms. Wheeler to read these, but you did not ask for <clears throat> further conversation about your particular interest per each one of these. It ain't my particular interest. It's the interest of the city. And so we on the first one that she read. And Call for the, orders of the day. I, I'm, I, we in the orders of the day. And the orders of the day is the discussion on the motion to go in executive session on Matthews, Palladino, the complaint I'm referring to, and another matter. We are in the orders of the day. Ms. Wheeler has already stated Ms. Field, those two issues. Ms. Field, you fall want the floor? I'm going to give you the floor. Now, speak now that I didn't give you the floor, because I didn't hear you when I didn't give you the floor. So now, speak. I'm giving you the floor. Ms. Wheeler has already stated that the two items that she wants to discuss under closed session fall under pending, pending litigation. So anything past that is um, superfluous. Well, I don't know what superfluous means, but I do know what this means. When we discussed <laughs> on agenda changes that we would talk about this complaint, Matthews and Palladino, it wasn't superfluous or ruthless or moveless. It was discussed and we own it now. And that's the discussion. Mr. Davis, do you remember on the agenda changes, we talked about more than one subject or, or two. We talked more than just Palladino and Matthews. Okay. Everybody sitting at this table should remember that. And so whatever, you, what does for proof of this mean? Ms. Galloway. I just want to say, just for you, I'm not going to read it, but it was sent, Attorney Willier was sent to you on December 27th. I think you were on vacation. And it's been posted on Facebook. So December 27th, let me say this. If our staff, who I'm going to take up for, gets a request for an executive session, and we, we bog down just like every other department, and we don't know if they got it or didn't, it's no different, Ms. Wheeler, than you getting that complaint on December 27th. Do you know how much paperwork we get? We got to start believing each other. We got to start working with each other. So now, is it any further discussion as it relates to that? If not, Ms. Wheeler, could you read the other three, four, or five reasons for executive session before I call for a vote? Yes, um, two is the higher education open fly to us, or B is. Um, C is for B is what? It's for higher edu education for schools. It doesn't apply to the city. Okay. Okay. C uh, for strategy and negotiation sessions connected with the negotiation of a collective bargaining agreement that the negotiating parties request a post session. Uh, D to consider the purchase or lease of property up to the time uh, um, an option or a purchase or at least of that real property is obtained. So stop right there. The discussion of properties can be an executive session. Read that a little more because I don't want to put the properties that are being acquired from four cold close in an executive <coughs> session if not need be. What did that say? I read it says that to the other day. consider the purchase or lease of real property up to the time an option or purchase or lease 
um, that real property is of that real property is obtained. And the reason I look at that, Miss Galloway, and I know Mr. Winfrey got to leave, the attorney got to leave, so we gonna move forward, but we taking care of business. The reason I mention that when it discusses the properties we for, we took from the treasurer for closing, Mr. Davis, and I hate to keep saying your name, but I will. Remember, some folks said it was illegal activity. Constantly, we didn't heard that. And that's bad to be doing when legally it ain't illegal. But you got folks saying that out here in open session. So keep that in mind if it relates to a reason to discuss property sales in executive session. Is that the last one, Miss? No. What's the, how many more? Go ahead. He is to consult with, a, it's an attorney regarding trial or settlement strategy and connecting with specific pending litigation that only the uh, open meeting will have a detrimental effect on litigating or settlement position of the public body. And that's the one that we going in on Matthews and Palladino, is that it? Yes, that's correct. Then um, F to review the and consider the contents of an application for employment to a public office if the candidate requests the application remain confidential. Um, and there's some exceptions in that. That's like if we're appointing somebody and we want to review it. Okay, so look. Um, there's still more. Okay, go ahead. And just so, so you know, the one that I was speaking about earlier, H, um, G is for the legislature is not applicable to the city, um, for the state legislature, so it's not applicable to the city. H is to consider material exempt from discussion or disclosure by state or federal statute. And the exempt one would be the one, the confidential memos and or emails. No, it would be, be like an attorney-client privileged document. I said confidential memo. That's yeah. what that is. Yeah. That's what a confidential memo is. It's an right. attorney-client privilege. We get them all the time from your office, so I want the public to know when we say confidential memos, we say the same thing. The problem we got is too many people trying to act like folks don't know what's happening and folks do know what's happening. And it's wasting our time to have to do this when we already know the rules. We should know the rules. And the rules tell us we can go in executive session on a vote of six or more. We make a record. We don't have to have it on no agenda in advance. And we done went over this. It's like beating a dead horse. Now. This is the question and discussion I got before I called for the vote. How many people object to going into the executive session as it relates to the complaint? Anybody? It was a complaint made on me from somebody. You object with that? Doesn't that mean you vote no? Okay, so the motion that we vote on as it relates to executive session is the Matthews case the Paladino case and the complaint. All in favor of going to executive session roll call, Madam Clerk. Roll call. I'm asking you, are you voting yes or no? Oh, I didn't know what you were saying. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Davis? Yeah, Okay. Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Briggs? Yes. Mr. Williams? <clears throat> no. Okay, so executive session failed? No. No, it ain't. Yes. We need six. So let's move on with the agenda. The executive session request fails. Let's move on with the agenda. Um, we, 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 we will. We don't have we done wasted a lot of time. So we said we do it while the executive session was going on. The executive session has failed. Paul, oh, let me continue to proceed with this meeting. What's next on the agenda? The next on the agenda is to update on the audit. That's what we said. So let me say this. It pays to stay in the room while we're having a meeting. That vote failed five to one. It takes six to go in executive session. Maybe somebody will reconsider it later, but I'm going to keep moving. The audit um, was completed on time. 
which was the December 31st deadline. There was problems at first as to whether or not um, it would be completed on time and whether or not there would be a um, extension requested. And so then we read a press release from the administration. Ms. Worthen, that press release included a comment by you. Ms. Worthen, did you and Mr. Griggs, Mr. Davis, did any of y'all notice that uh, according to Ms. President Galloway, you were sent a copy of the final audit that y'all received at Ms. Worthen, did you, you got it, Mr. Griggs? Yes. Did you get it, Ms. Worthen? Is this on the agenda? Yeah, the discussion of the audit. We did. We voted for a gender change, but you have the right to remain silent. I'm not saying anything. Okay, but you had something to say in a press release I from did, it. But, I don't have but you say you didn't have nothing to say. So why now you say you don't have nothing to say when I say you was mentioned in a press release? As I get an update, you interrupted. You out of order. That's your first one. So, Miss Miss Worthen spoke in the press release, and. Um, we also had a letter that came from the state of Michigan that gives us 30 days to do some corrective action. Mr. Mr. Edwards, I want you to understand this and I want the public to understand this and I want this message to go out because if I have to do a press release, we will. The audit is what the council do. The administration can't review an audit. Now, I can read the language in the charter, but this administration is fooling folk if they want them to think they're conducting an audit. That would be like the fox guarding the hen house. The audit is the council. And I see through you, your office, Mr. Edwards, and you can raise your hand. I'll let you correct me if I'm wrong, but you giving documents to folks. And then they showing up on Facebook. And then it's press releases being done. Mr. Edwards, you, you can address us, can move closer. Uh, that is flat out incorrect. What's incorrect about that? The fact that any documents have come out of my office from me. So if the documents are in people's Thank possession, because there are several people that are attached to emails when I send out documents. So I'm saying to you that that is totally incorrect and a false statement. Is it possible if you send them to other folks, then other folks send them to other folks? I think I'm clear on the fact that you said Clyde did it. You said uh, let I me did. let me say this. I'm gonna say it again. Hey, my no information. Point no. up, Mr. Mr. No. Woods. You ain't it ain't no council meeting. You don't have a quorum. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, you can't do nothing, bro. Oh, I can do a lot. No, you can't. I can do a no, lot. No, you can't. Get corn cool first. Don't worry. All right, then. And when I get it, I'm going to show you <coughs> on this same calendar going, what hey, can be done. Hey, so do right now, it do, ain't bro. a corn. We ain't it's in not a corn. So you want to talk to me, bro? We're talking, bro. Since you said, <laughs> bro. Bro. I'm talking about Hey, man, about get your you. horse. Facebook. Get your horse in the stable, man. Running around with. Get your horse in the stable, man. Give him some water or something. No, some no. You, 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 ain't, you, you, ain't, you ain't fooling around with the attorney general's office. You're talking like that, bro. 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 No quorum. Now we're going to proceed, bro. This meeting is back in order. Mr. Edwards, can you approach? Ms. Brown, can you swear him in? If you want to talk on truth of the matter of what's going on, Amen. I would ask that you swear Mr. Clyde Edwards in. We got some questions to ask you, I know. Go ahead. Um, Mr. Mays, because I've never done this before. But this is a committee meeting. Well, it can be done. I would want to ask the city attorney. Because we don't to do that. We asking you. You work for this council. We asking but, you to swear also, somebody in. Is there any objections? I also work for the people of this Okay, so there's the city attorney. Read. It's going to be a lot that ain't normally done under this leadership. We ain't going to have folks coming up here telling half truths and lies, and we dealing with millions of dollars. If they say it on this record and they under oath, they face the penalties of perjury. That's how the city going to run. 
Ain't nobody going to come up here calling folks lies. Miss Galloway, you got evidence that something came from Clyde's email. He says it's a flat out lie. I'm going to prove and see if it is. He said, but if it came from his email, it must have went from him to somebody else. That's exactly what we said. Ms. Brown, Ms. Wheeler, she want to know if we request her to swear somebody in, do she do it? I say she worked for us, she do it. We in a committee meeting. Anybody can be sworn in and we can investigate anything before a committee and or council. And that's where we at. So I don't need the city attorney to tell me what my job <laughs> can be. Whether it's finances, whether it's emails, anybody for this administration that we need good answers on money, and on business, we can ask that they come before us sworn. It ain't nothing new. It's going to continue to be done. I'm going to make sure when folk leave here giving us information, if they done lied to me, they're going to be facing the penalty of perjury. Now, I done heard this man stand up and call me a flat-out liar for saying something coming from his email, but then he gonna call me a liar and say his email go to two, three different people, but it might not have come from him. Let's get to the bottom of it, sir, because you the city administrator. Miss Brown, is you refusing to swear him in? Yeah. I'm not refusing, I'm determining the legality of, of Okay, the let us worry about that. Miss Wheeler, are you refusing to give us the legalities of whether we can request somebody be sworn in because we're asking you through her, we're going to give her that courtesy. But I know, I know how stuff works around here. What's, do you have an opinion on whether we can ask people to be sworn in before us? I, I, I think that you might be missing a couple of steps because it talks about hearings under the charter. And so I, this is not a, a hearing in the form of what's under the charter. So I think it is a little bit misplaced that there would be a be a someone sworn under oath for coming to a committee meeting, which is not a hearing as described under the charter. So we simply have to call it a hearing and ask and vote and he have to be sworn in. That's the hoop you make wanna make us jump through. So I, I y'all understand what what's being said? So Mr. Day. I will get to you, Ms. Fields. Mr. Davis, yes, sir. you understand what's being said? Clearly. Ms. Fields, you got the floor. I believe there are rules on what constitutes a hearing, including public notice, which has not been done. That ain't true. A uh, uh, investigative hearing ain't a public hearing. So I think you a little misguided there. Well, um, I, I let's continue, Ms. Ms. Fields. I'm not going to argue with you. When you get the floor, you speak. When I get the flow back, you act a certain way. Now, we done voted not to go in executive session. Ms. Fields, you were gone. That motion to go in the executive session failed. I'm sensitive to the attorney. If y'all are going to take care of business, y'all better stay here. And if you get up and leave and it ain't no qualms and folks howling out, that ain't good. Stay here and get the work of the people of the city of Flint done. Now, because Eva voted no, and we wasting this man's time and my man's and my time too. What's your point? Don't include me. It's I'm gonna include how you vote. You as an elected official, and you gonna be judged by your voting record. No, I'll get, no, you out. You getting warned. Mm -hmm. Now you speak again. And you can go. You ain't voting with us anyway. Now, that's your first one, and I'm going to ask that you be removed when you keep on playing games with this chairman. This chairman will now entertain a motion for reconsideration on the executive session. Ms. Galloway has made a motion for reconsideration on the executive session. Mr. Winfrey? I second that. It's been moved and probably seconded. We're in discussion on reconsideration if there is some. Ms. Fields, you want to speak whether it is or not? Go ahead. Let I would not appeal. vote for reconsideration okay. with the addition of the email. I would agree to the original uh, request for an executive session Ms. under the under the legally stated 
exemption that allows for Ms. Exemption. Ms. Fields, let's uh, call I'm for the order the other day. Now, I'm telling you, you have no, an order because you, you can discuss that me. on the motion. We on a motion for reconsideration. Are you going to call this Madam President? She yeah, ain't sharing. This abuse from sharing. sharing? Yes, what's your Does point? Does my colleague realize that she can appeal the decision of the chair? She and should know that. She should know that. But you're not going to. I am appealing. Well, then say the words. You appeal in the ruling of the chair. Is there a second? Miss Miss Worthy. Second the appeal of the ruling of the chair. Now, the appeal of the ruling of the chair, she didn't state what it was. So I can assume that it was because I'm getting her back on track on a motion for reconsideration versus discussion on a motion or a separation. She was trying to do a separation, and we ain't even to the motion yet that would be new. And so I ruled out order to keep her on the motion for reconsideration. Now, I heard what she had initially said. She said, if it includes that order. So I'm, I mean, the third thing. So I'm trying to let her know, deal with the reconsideration. They had an opportunity to separate it then. She'll have an opportunity to discuss that. But we move in this meeting alone. We ain't got to have folk coming in and out of here not knowing what's happening and then wasting time with something that can be discussed if the motion for reconsideration passes. And the time is clicking. I know what I'm doing. Miss Fields, go ahead. And be relevant to the motion for reconsideration only. What's your point? We're on appeal of the, of the ruling of the chair and I just stated what I thought was appealed even though she didn't properly appeal it because she didn't state what she was appealing but go ahead Ms. Field. I did not get an opportunity to because initially you interrupted me Mr. Mays and didn't allow me to finish what I was saying because you didn't like what I was saying and that is abusing <clears throat> the authority of the chair so I Call the point of order because you are abusing the authority of the chair by interrupting when I have the floor. Um, further discussion, Ms. Worthy. What she was saying was relevant to reconsideration. I, it was exactly what the motion was about. So far, uh, it's been over an hour that we've started, and besides about five minutes of time, the only voice we've heard is you, Mr. Mays. That, that mean if you only heard my voice, that's a lie. You're lying in public. Go ahead, Ms. Galloway. I just like to point out liars. Mr. Chair, first of all, you did interrupt, Ms. Field. And, and just for, for, for my colleagues and for the audience that is here, it is not the president's responsibility. We have a appeal of the chair. And then when you appeal the chair, we talk about where we agree. And so that is our process according to our rules. And I agreed that you did interrupt. And I thought it was relevant myself. That's just me. And so that's why I suggested that we follow the rules that we, we decided that we would abide by. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any more discussion on the appeal? I'll say the final um, statement. A chair, contrary to popular belief, can interrupt a speaker to conduct and keep a meeting moving. It was relevant that she said she wouldn't vote on in the reconsideration if it was split. But the reconsideration is the no vote. My point was to move the meeting and get it done. She don't have to vote on the reconsideration, but it has nothing to do with what she separate. If the reconsideration passed, then she can, when the motion is made to go in executive session on three, she could separate that. That's when that discussion would be relevant. So I respectfully disagree with you, Ms. Galloway. Once she said it, I understood it. I'm getting her on track. She came, she left. If she had been here, maybe she'd have separated it, and maybe she would have voted yes. So when Ms. Worthen say how much time has been wasted, and lie and say only one voice has been heard, I got a problem with that. I'm not bending back with, for folks who leave in and out of meetings when I specifically call her. 
I ain't going to be accused of wasting time. And, and I'm going to tell you 100%, a chair can facilitate a meeting. And a chair can interrupt in order to keep stuff on track and keep it moving. So don't take that away from a chair because you will be one and you won't be able to control the flow of the meeting. Now, if I have to read the rule, I can take time to do that. And I can read the rule that tells you a chair has the opportunity to keep a meeting on point. She interrupted me to call for the orders of the day and we was already on it. So that's what y'all are talking about. You want to vote to determine whether or not a chair can facilitate a meeting and keep it moving. And Ms. Galloway, I hope you change your mind because you're the president. If you fool around and vote that a chair can't, y'all using the word interrupt in a negative way. It's called chairing a meeting, keeping it moving. But the negative word is interrupt. When I hear what's being said, and I'll close with this and we can vote. The discussion she was having would have been if after the reconsideration passed, when the motion was put to go in executive session on three things in this chairman's view, then she could have said, I want to separate it. I'll vote yes or no. But the motion to reconsideration discussion, she came strong on me. I don't want it that bad. I won't vote for a reconsideration unless we get to that motion and then take this on off. Well, don't vote for a reconsideration. So I think I'm going to keep this meeting moving. You can't come back in under these rules, but you want to break the rules. I'll break them. What you want to say? Let them appeal that. Just like you telling her to appeal. Let them appeal it. You got something to say? That was my decision. All right, a yes vote means that you can chair me. A no vote means you can't interrupt when you point chair of order. me. Point of order. What's you, your point? You are misstating the appeal. You want to state it? Go ahead. And if somebody appealed, you can't restate it. I have to. But I'm, I want to be appealed. You state what it is we both know, Ms. Fields. The appeal is you were abusing your authority as a chair and interrupting. Okay. So that's the appeal. If you vote yes, I'm abusing my authority as a chair. If you vote no, then uh, no. If you vote yes, I wasn't abusing my authority as a chair. If you vote no, that means I was abusing my authority. <laughs> That's what it say. I said, I said you can chair a meeting and interrupt. She appealed that. So if you vote yes, you side with the chair that I can chair a meeting. If you vote no, then you say I was abusing it and we move on. Point of order. What's your point? Both of you are misstating. The reality <laughs> is to vote yes is the decision of the chair yes or do you not support the decision of the chair miss galloway and all this miss galloway miss galloway you guys, use and point of order to get the flow and try to explain yes. something now if you want me to give you the flow i do it like i did miss kate Fields, and let somebody appeal me you state what we both know she's done it i've tried to do it so now you do it you don't need a point of order for that unless somebody appeal Y'all nitpicking. I'm going to state it and we're going to vote. If you vote yes, I can chair me. If you vote no, I abuse my chair. That's what this appeal is. What's so hard, to, Mr. Davis? You seem to be straining with that. I'm a little lost, but I'm fine. Mr. Winters? Yes. got it backwards. It's in favor of no. It ain't backwards. Yes, you sustain in the chair. No, you're saying the chair abused his power. It's as simple as that. No matter, y'all killing the message. That's what y'all doing. Ms. Worthy and I decide when it's understood and voted. I done broke procedure. I done let Ms. Phil say something. Ms. Whatever. So all in favor of the uh, chair's decision, raise your hand. That's funny, Mr. Davis. All opposed the chair, raise your hand. All abstain. 
So it's five. The, hey, it's five. The, the decision is five. So, Miss Fields, proceed. I did not want to vote to reconsider. I would offer a substitute motion uh, to hold an executive session just for the two reasons that our city attorney stated met the criteria for holding a closed session. Um, we on a motion for reconsideration. We gonna dispose of that. Substitute motion. We can. We on a motion for reconsideration. If you want to vote, I'll, we can vote yes or no to see. That's the motion on the floor. That motion ain't even proper right now. So I'm not. I offered a substitute. I know motion. what you said. I'm ruling that we ain't going in. A, it ain't proper. Now you can appeal that. We gonna vote yes or no on the. On the motion for point of order, I would request that the chair find that rule. No, point of order is you can appeal the ruling. I'm saying we're going to vote on the motion for reconsideration. Anything short of appeal, we're going to vote on the motion of reconsideration. On the record, official protest, that's incorrect. Okay, and the such thing. Any more discussion on the motion for reconsideration? All in favor of reconsidering? This is a reconsideration on the vote that failed to go into executive session. It takes six votes to reconsider. Once you get six votes, then you can put the new motion on the floor. If it don't get six votes, then we move on. Everybody straight? Okay, any more discussion on the motion for reconsideration? All in fact, Ms. Brown, it don't have to be a roll call, do it. Go ahead, roll call. I send you move. Hey, Mr. Mays. On the reconsideration? Yes. yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Ms. Fields? No. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Yeah. Ms. Dickeriggs? No. Ms. Worthy? No. Just a lot of time wasted. So we don't go into executive session, and I want you to know who was involved with that. So. There's a, if I could call the vote, please. Okay. The vote is uh, four yes and three no. Four yes and three no. Yes. Just a bunch of more waste of the time. I'm starting to wonder is this intentional? Mr. Chair, I have a motion. Hey, Mr. Miss Fields, I see you, but you don't just interrupt me because when you do that, and I'm gonna warn you, this is your first warning. When you do that, I ain't gonna recognize it till I get ready because you're not gonna just howl out and tell me when I'm talking. You shake your head all you want. Do it again, I'm gonna ask that you be removed. Form or no form. You ain't running this council like that. Stay seated and we might not be where we at now. Now, this is where we at. We own the business of discussing the audience. Now, what you said you wanted to do, Ms. Fields, you say you wanted to discuss the audit and you wanted to discuss um, the housing. Point of order. What's your point? Mr. Chair, you said that a motion, a substitute motion was not appropriate. We needed to vote it up or down, and then that motion would be entertained, and now you're not entertaining. When you get the floor. I just ain't gonna have reward people for howling out without getting the floor. That's what Miss Fields did. Now you got the flow properly. You wanna make that motion? <laughs> like make well then motion do it. Quit arguing with the chair and trust the chair, I'll President make a motion Galloway. That we go to executive session for the two that attorney Wheeler mentioned on the record. Mr. Um Winfrey. It's been moved and properly second, and everybody understood what the motion is. I'm trying to get this council to do right. And Ms. Galloway, when we pick leadership and we come in here, we need to stick and do what we need to do, though we're going to look like food. If this administration and folks can divide and conquer, Mr. Woodson might think it's funny, hey, but hey, I don't think me, it. Mr. Woodson, can y'all tell him to quit saying my name, here. man? Hey, I'm Mrs. serious, man. Metcalf, I want him name. gone. Mr. Tell him to quit saying my name. What's your point? Because um, you ain't fit to run this. Hey. Yeah. Um, are we supposed to refrain from no, we don't. saying the name dialogue no, with No, the somebody that created that. Ain't no such thing. The only rule is don't be argumentative ain't with the public. Know. And I ain't gonna argue with the public. I'm gonna get them the hell out of here. 
It ain't no, it ain't nothing to say I can't say nobody's name. I can say Mr. Del Ramone, John Daly, hello, April Cook. Don't make up rules. I ain't making up now rule for Woodson and nobody else. Mr. Metcalf, see the guy, the gentleman in the blue? If he move wrong or interrupt this meeting again, I want you to get him out. And I'm, you're not going to be over there, Mr. Woodson. I'll give you one chance. You can move your camera and yourself away from ours that we pay $30,000 a more year if you continue to laugh and make noise and interrupt our live feed. You understand that location thing? You said, get him out of here. I done warned you before you got here. I'm warning you in front of him. Point now of do order. anything. Point of order. What's your point? You cannot remove a member of the public for laughing. I'm going to remove. You cannot do that. A, I say your point of order is wrong, and I can remove them. I but appeal the ruling of the chair. <laughs> okay. It's been appealed. Um, is there a second, Ms. Worthy? I second that. Okay. I'm going to keep order where there's laughing, howling, or whatever, and I say Ms. Fields is wrong. Anybody else got any discussion? Hearing none, she was wrong. All who say I can't keep order, vote no. If you say you can keep order, whether it's laughing or whether it's howling, vote yes. So this is going to be a yes or no vote. Point of order. What's your point? Okay, so. This ain't no rocket sign. Um, you're stating it as if the chair, if the appeal, well, point of information. Through you, Mr. Chair, to my colleague, Ms. Fields, what exactly was your appeal? Ms. Galloway. Through me that's to Miss Fields. So it's going to go through me. Yes, sir. That's been answered. No. And I'm going to tell you why. Just pay attention. I'm going to take it on to Miss Fields. But she said, I can't stop folks from laughing and talking in here. Miss Fields, you had something through me to you. Pay attention. Miss Fields, you refused to answer Miss Galloway? My appeal was. Uh once again, that Mr. Mays is incorrect. He cannot remove a me uh, member of the public for laughing. Mr. Uh, Woodson was not, it was not disruptive laugh. It wasn't a loud we, laugh. He was chuckling is that to himself. Request, he he cannot information remove that give her back a, media, the a member of the public for whatever reason. Y'all put you in the appeal. I opened it up for discussion. Nobody said that not through point of information and point of orders. We back in discussion. Uh, Ms. Galloway, did that satisfy your point of information? Not the way you stated it, but I, I guess. Let me I say this. Vote. You got folks in here politically. They laughing, trying to make a mockery of this council. I ain't going to deal with it. Whether it's Woodson, Mutson, Tootson, or Ritson, it could be Ms. Johnson, Ronson, or I'm not going to have it. And if you let it get out of hand, you're going to have a problem. I know these folks, been knowing them and watching them for years. I know who the allies with Miss Fields. It ain't gonna happen under my watch. If you vote, if you vote. Point of order. What's your point? Mr. Mays, you are not being germane to the appeal. I'm gonna be Tito, Marlon, yeah, Jackie, we'll so I'll rule material. that I am it's germane. And you interrupted me, you using the point of orders. That's your first one. Keep using them point of orders to interrupt the meeting and get the flow, I'm gonna ask that you be removed. You gotta go at 6.30 and so do the attorney. So this has been something. Now, I'm gonna say this. If you vote yes, I'm gonna stop talking, laughing, and everything else in these meetings. If you vote no, it's gonna get out of hand. So she appealed because I'm telling Woodson you ain't gonna be laughing loud by them cameras. What's your point? You just threatened the entire city council to vote the way you want. That ain't a point of order. Miss mm -hmm. Worthen, you've been warned. If you can't figure out these rules of point I, of order point and order. point of information, point you order. out of order. And you're using the flow to order something that ain't a procedure point of order. Now let me say this. I'm going to rule on your point of order. <laughs> Threatening is a nasty word. And I don't appreciate your adjective. So I'm going to try to get back on track. If you vote yes, it's in favor of the ruling of the chair that I'm going to stop all of that. If you vote no, 
I won't say nothing to none of the audience and it'll get out of hand. So that's my view. Now, Ms. Galloway, I done restated it. If you want me to state it different, appeal, and we can appeal that. But I know what I'm doing. Everybody know what's happening in here, don't they? If you vote yes, the chair going to try to keep order. If you vote no on this one, that means folks in the audience can't be addressed, whether they laugh and talk and anything. Point That's order, my you view. are misstating. Well, then consider it mis as you appeal in my misstatement, because it ain't going to change. Now, enough is enough. All in favor of the ruling of the chair, raise your hand. All opposed to ruling of the chair, raise your hand. Then the all abstain. Okay, so it passes five to the, the ruling of the chair fails. Mr. Woodson, laugh, talk, do what you like. Where are we at on the agenda? Point I'm going to do it because you allowing them behavior things, Ms. Galloway. We find, we find a divide on our beliefs, and so we can go that route. Ms. Worthen, is it something you want? I make a motion. Ms. Fields, you out of order. Ms. Fields, you out of order. Ms. Fields, you out of order. Why Mr. Metcalf at? <laughs> Miss <laughs> Fields, you out of order. Hold on a minute, Miss Worthy, because Miss Fields ain't running that. You remember the motion you were making, and it was second by her, and that was we was in discussion. So Ms. hold up, hold up, Miss Worthy, you got the flow. Can I make a motion? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Can Let me chat this. Can I make a motion? Or yeah, I'm trying to keep people from talking to you while you're talking. Make the motion that you're saying. Point of information. You can do it that way. Does my colleague realize that we're already in a motion? She don't, but I gave her can the I flow. Can make a motion? She still can make a motion or something to let her proceed with what she's saying. I don't know how y'all reading her mind. Miss Worthen, you got the flow. What were you saying? Well, if you will allow a motion. No, it was Miss Fields and Miss Galloway. Don't blame me for anything when people interrupt you. Proceed. I Not no editorials. You were making a motion. Proceed. I make a motion that we remove Mr. Mays as chair at this time so that we can continue on with the city business. Um, I'm not, or I'm not, we in a motion. We in a motion, we in discussion on a motion to go in executive session. Did you make that motion on the two items? That's why, and, he, and he's second. Now, if they're second to Ms. Worthen's uh, motion, which is really out of order, point of order it is out of order you can't make another motion while a motion is on the floor that's the point miss worthy and you don't have to believe me i, I just let's move on you out of order telling me and how this meeting to move you just be quiet is the best way to do that we are on a discussion on a motion to go in executive session on two items matthews and paladino is it any more discussion Roll call, Madam Clerk. Just a waste of time. And don't know what the hell going on. I'm just getting tired of it. And you got to help nip it in the bud. Roll call, Madam Clerk. You losing me. Roll call, Madam Clerk. I ain't stopping. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Ms. Fields? Yes. Mr. Wondry? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Briggs? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. The vote is seven yes, zero no to vote.
and then act in a capacity as an acting a department head as well. Can you have dual roles? And I would, I, I would like that answer to come back as soon as possible. I'm initiated a meeting through President Galloway and myself. And we met in our office. And once I heard that that was going to be some possible delays, I told, I asked the auditor, let's go for a walk to see if we can help facilitate information. And we came to your office. You received us, you recall? Yes. And in that search for documents and things not to hold up audits, um, you made a call to somebody who used to work here, you recall? Yes. Tell us who you called. Don Steele. Don Steele. And then with the two auditors and Don Steele on the phone and yourself, we it was kind of kicked around as to how to search out certain information or how to try to solve their problems. Would that be a fair statement? Yes. Subsequently, they end up, for whatever reason, making the deadline. You're familiar with that? Yes. And then, subsequently, the state of Michigan, and you can tell me who the signee of the letter was, sent a letter dated January the 2nd. And that January 2nd letter looked at what I'm going to call some material findings, and it wanted us to put together a plan and submit it to the state within 30 days. Would that be a fair statement? Yes. Who was that letter from? Uh, the Department of Treasury. I don't remember the exact name that signed the letter. And when I asked you about that letter, you say you couldn't release it to us until you talked to who? To Mr. Edwards. In fact, um, Amanda or Ms. Trujillo, Ms. Trujillo, in fact, or maybe not in fact, but do you know who conducts the audit, the executive branch or the legislative branch? You mean for the council? For the, for the city of Flint. Well, I know the council pays for the audit. But you don't know under whose purview the audit falls, the executive or legislative? No. no. So you don't know that the charter says that the mayor has no review over the audit? I don't know that. And so you are the chief financial officer. You are the treasurer. Have you been able to fulfill both duties? You manage the water. You're the treasurer. And now you're the chief financial officer. Officer, have they given you a raise? I'm getting paid at the level of the CFO, yes. So the raise came because now you're getting paid at the level of the CEO. Do you know, Ms. Wheeler, did you hear me ask, can you hold two appointed positions? And I want feedback on that. Did you hear me say that? Yes. And so will that be forthcoming? Yes, it is. Any council person at this point got any questions? Ms. Um, fields. I have comments on the on the audit, some generic comments, and um, but I don't have any questions for Mr. Okay, Hill. let me continue with questions, and we'll come back, and you can make your comments. Any council persons have any questions at this time of Ms. Trujillo? Ms. Galloway. You got Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Um, Amanda, according to the auditors, the draft was received by the finance department on February 27th. Are you aware of that? The draft of the audit? You mean December 27th? I'm sorry, yes, December okay. 27th. Are you aware of that? Were, were you a recipient of that draft? I yes, I don't remember the exact date, but I, ha I did see the draft. Okay, yes. so you did see the draft on yes. December 27th. Well, I think it was the 30th. I think it was that Monday before. Yes, it's either the 27th or the 30th. Okay, I just wanted to ask that. Thank you, sir. And that draft for the record was distributed to the administration, not the council. The administration received that on, I think, Friday the 27th, and we didn't know about it and know it had been completed and compiled until that 
Monday or Tuesday or so, and then that's when I requested a copy of the draft. I then said to the auditors, we paying y'all, it's under our purview. When you finish with the final copy, as you get ready to submit it to the state, give us our work product first. And I say then, once we get it, we will release it to everybody. And Ms. Galloway, you released a copy to the mayor and the city council. You did? And city council, I know Mr. Griggs, for one, Mr. Griggs, am I mistaken, you nodded back in the committee room that you had seen the copy of the audit or had received it from Ms. Galloway? Well, who did you get it from? So you don't know that Ms. Galloway sent you that email and you don't know that our staff provided it to council at, our, at the request of, and you did, um, Janelle, you provided it to the council. And that's what we try to do. We was a little disappointed that um, folks were walking around and doing press releases about something that they don't even have control over, such as the mayor while we're trying to conduct the audit as we would do on his administration as well as the previous administration. So that's a lot of chaos going on in City Hall. My job is to straighten it out. My job is to straighten it out. Um, I see Mr. Edwardson come and you didn't say he the one told you to come. How many requests for your presence did you receive from us over the last month? I believe two. Two. Yes. And they were to come to finance committee meetings. I believe so, yes. Did you, do you know, you remember Tamar Lewis? Yes. Huey Newsom? Yes. Do you realize how many city council meetings they had to go to when you agreed to take this job? Yes. And so if you ain't worried about that. No. But well, some folks ordered you not to come. <laughs> It would be a dysfunctional city if they continued to order you not to come. I'll make it easier for you and don't take offense. If they continue to order you not to come, just when the subpoena hit, if this council choose. But if this council choose to run a city without the chief financial officer communicating, and if this administration continues to give them, give you those orders, I'm going to see what these folks do because I ain't buying it. Um, Amanda, is shutoffs still froze in the city of Flint or are there shutoffs happening? No, the, the non-pay turnoffs are suspended at this time. So people who, like myself, ain't paying, I ain't getting shut off. Correct. And I sure used to have to struggle to pay, but I stayed on. And so I did ask you that the minute um, I'm asking that the minute that status change, you've told me once, unless somebody order you differently, do you still plan to notify me when those shutoffs resume? Well, any customer who is eligible for be turned off will be notified with a shutoff notice. Before they shut off? Correct. How much advance notice do you know or have a plan? Not yet, no. Would it be fair to say they might get a seven-day notice? It could, yes. Could be a three-day notice. Yes. Could be a one-day notice. Mm, no, probably at least two. <laughs> at least two. Yes. So when the shutoffs resume, I want the citizens of the city of Flint to know that we might at least have a two-day notice. So what type of shutoffs is happening? I've seen a shutoff for somebody who had the water in a deceased person's name. Yes, I mean, that, those type of turnoffs can still happen. If someone orders their water off, um, we still do those turn off. If someone moves, we turn them off. Um, the water, um, per the ordinance, cannot be in a deceased individual's name. So we notify the occupant that the, you know, the water is um, in the name of someone that is deceased, and we notify them. We usually give them a month to come in and change the name into you know, whoever is on the deed or if there's a new tenant there. And so do you have a category of those non-payments are not being shut off? Do you have a category name that are being still shut off for? 
I mean, those, we those anyone that's still getting turned off, we consider we call them a regular turn off. Say that again. We call those a regular turn off. So regular turn offs is happening. Yes. And that's an example of a regular. Well, a, a, what we can more to the point of what a regular turn off is is one like somebody who is moving, and they order okay. off. Yes. Moving and then I mean, they we relocate. Still use the same type of work order when we do something like that for a deceased individual's name. We use that same type of work order, but I mean, it's you know, it's. Have they implemented what I'm gonna call the evil worthing amendment? You familiar with what I'm calling the evil worthing amendment? It was a vote by council to not charge the seventy-five dollars for disconnection, and the council voted. Have that came down to you, are we still charging $75 for disconnection? Well, you haven't done any since you've done that. Was Say that you? again. I don't think we've done any turnoffs since you guys changed that, where you guys eliminated a fee. Um, if, if, if somebody did get shut off from what you know running that department with the $75 shut off uh, fee be charged, well, we only charged the turn-on fee when, and when they came in and paid. We didn't charge both fees to get the water back on. So, so what we've done here um, have been implemented by the administration. No more $75 shut-off fee. That was what I thought council did. But council did, but yeah. sometimes council will request and do things and the administration don't implement it. I'm simply asking no, yeah, if that $75 has been implemented. Yes. Okay, Ms. Galloway, you had something. No, I just was wondering the point of order. What's your point? My point of order is we were saying that, where, what is that? My, my point of order was just where is this in relation to the audit? I'm just trying to see how we're tying it in. I don't have a problem, but we. I we, can tell you how it's related. I appreciate it. We had a fund um, ending cash in the water um, um, account of about 30 something million, Mr. Davis. And we had a end in cash balance um, in the sewer fund of about 20.4 million. That's a total of um, 50 something million coming through there. That's part of the audit. And I'm here to tell you, Amanda, let this public know, if you know, I'll tell them, tell them the amount of money that when the shutoffs was ordered and we looked, that we lost. I, uh, you, I'm talking about about 500,000 in one month. You know that figure? No, not aware. Okay, I've been informed that it was about 500,000 in a difference of lost revenue. Now, the initial no shutoff policy started during the UAW strike. Would that be a fair statement? Yes. And it was ordered not to shut off under Mayor Dr. Karen Weaver. Correct. And so now that no shut off policy, who in the administration told you to carry that on? Was it the same person, Clyde, or the mayor? Um, that would be. That was in a meeting that was that was announced. So would you know, Mr. Edwards and Mr. Neely were both there. So I don't remember. So you was in a meeting at some point. Um, whether you were acting as the manager and or the um, chief financial officer and you attended a meeting with Mr. Edwards and Mr. Neely, whoever else was there, and you clearly know that right from that point, carry no shut off home and you'll wait for further directions. Correct. And at that time that I heard, I was the treasurer. The How treasurer. much um, revenue if you know, and if you don't know, I want you to research it and come back and tell this finance chair and this council, do you have any idea of the difference in revenue since the no shut off policy for any month? I don't know the exact dollar amounts, but I do know that the percentage has gone down. Um, and I can't, I don't know the exact percentages of each month or the d exact dollar amounts, but it's, it was quite substantial. Unless you're given an order otherwise, I would request that you give me some examples of that lost revenue as soon as you can. Okay. Is that a fair request? Yes. The minute somebody order you not to transfer that information, you'll let me know. Okay. Okay. Is it anything that you want this council to know? 
um, how is it going? Do you need help um, in that area? If it's going well and you handling all of the responsibilities fairly? Um, I, everyone's been great helping me um, doing stuff. I, mean, I do have a meeting tomorrow with Plant Moran, so we're going to go over some stuff. Um, so, because I'm just trying to learn you know, the different aspects of that job because I, I'm not aware of every part of it and we're trying to do the budget, so um, slowly but surely. I like you, and so I'm wishing and praying for your success. You. Um, Amanda, and you know, no disrespect, Ms. Trujillo, I'm just so used to saying Amanda. <laughs> Amanda, you talk about Plant Moran. Did Plant Moran fall short during the audit and it was $100,000 I read about? Can you elaborate on that, an additional $100,000 for Plant Moran during the audit? Uh, that, I believe that $100,000 that was um, short was for um, Raymond. Oh, so it was for Raymond. Yes. What, Ms. Galloway, I'm going to come back to that, but she got her hand up. President Galloway. Huh? Okay, so who paid the extra 100000 I don't remember. Was it the city or the state? I don't remember. You don't know? I don't remember because I know the, I seen that was a, um, a resolution that was signed uh, before I came on as CFO. Passed by council? I believe so, yes. Yeah, but I'm reading something in the newspaper about an additional 100000 they negotiated with the state, and I thought that was Plant Moran, and I won't hold you to it because I'm going to get Mr. Edwards and anybody else up here who putting that information out. Mr. Guerra, was you trying to chime in on this? You speak into the microphone. Just after everybody's done, Okay, I, I see. I just thought you was trying. So you're not familiar with the $100,000 that I'm referring to that I just read about in the last two weeks. No, because only, like I said, the only 100,000 one was for, Ra for Raymond. Plant Moran has been paid by the state, do you know? Yes, that is and correct. And do you know how much they've been paid, and can you tell the public how long they've been here? As I get back up to speed as finance, finance chairman, because right. it was abruptly took wrongfully, right. but anyway, that's a whole nother story. I don't remember the dollar amounts, but I just I know that there was October, November, and December invoices. Um, Mr. Edwards, can you approach the mic? Sure, you can ask Amanda a quick question. I'm sticking with the audit and this money and these press releases. Amanda, will you be available um, for the the special meeting that's going to be specifically for the audit? Yes. Okay. And the reason why um, I'm asking is because one of the things that was addressed in here is cash controls. Yes. Do you know what I'm talking yes. about? Okay. Um, so if you can possibly come, because if I'm not mistaken, the letter that has been referred here tonight, um, is it addressing what we're going to do to address some of yes. those concerns? Yes. And so will you, be, is that going to be a proper time for you to be um, prepared to share any of the findings that are directly under your leadership, what you plan to put in place, or, or is that not enough time? Um, do we want to do that after? She got to see, can yeah. she come? <laughs> um, I mean, I will be available, but I'm sure that you probably need to hear from the auditors first, and then that way, I mean, I would be here to, you know, do any type of rebuttal or, you know, answer any questions. That's no, 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 it's not, it's not going to be, um, like, you answering questions as much as finding out, based on those finals, those, those findings, what is being put in place. And the reason why that one specifically rung out to me is because, um, it kind of seems like it's like a teller process. Yes. And so something in that teller process is potentially, um, could potentially have a liability yes. and or, right? And so um, I just simply want to know, is it is it a based on lack of staffing? I know you've had that before. Yes. And so maybe if you can come prepare with that, Amanda, because we should be going into the active stages of working on our budget 
And Correct. so this is the right time for that. Yes. And so that I'm just hoping that you'll um, consider what you need to address that, whether it's employees and or internal controls to make sure that that yes. doesn't happen. And you don't have to answer tonight. I just want you to know that that I know you've been talking about needing more staffing, and I hope that we can resolve that yes. as, as we go through. Yes. Okay. Thank yes. you. Thanks. And that, um, Amanda, I'll come to you, Mr. Garrett. But Amanda, you do know what uh, material findings mean. Yes. And you know the difference between significant findings and material findings? Yes. Does my colleagues know the difference between material findings and significant findings as it relates to an audit? Anybody need me to speak on it? A material finding is a finding that need to be corrected right away. It can affect the audit in a material way is more significant than a significant finding. Now, don't get me to going into detail and elaborating, but I'll give you an example of a material finding in this audit. And Amanda, you speak on it if you will. In one area, you got one person signing for ins and outs of financial flow. They recommend it should be at least two you familiar with that material finding? I, I can't remember totally, but okay. I mean, I'll Why do they give y'all all these drafts and documents before us, and then we get them afterwards and catch on? And then we read press releases that ain't coming from the chief financial officer, but from politicians. What's your point? Is the chair aware that just as in discussion, a chair reserves his discussion after all of the other colleagues get an opportunity to speak, that during this, I had requested, okay, to speak uh, on, on two items of new business, and the chair procedurally should have given other colleagues an opportunity to speak before he took over the floor. Your point of information is a question to the chair, and I'm going to say you're wrong. Let me say this, Ms. Fields. This is a audit discussion. This ain't no discussion on no motion. So to answer your point of information, you're wrong. I requested this on the agenda to give y'all information before I- I appeal the ruling of the chair. Um, there's an appeal of the ruling of the chair, um, Ms. Uh, worthy. It's been appealed in second. But Ms. Fields, you out of order. Because when you appeal the ruling of the chair, you got to state what the appeal is. So I'm going to give you another shot at it. What are you appealing? Can you state that since you know so much? I'm appealing the fact that the chair is disagreeing with me that the rest of council members should have the opportunity to speak before the chair monopolizes the floor and asks his questions. So now that we're clear, Ms. Worthen, is that the m appeal that you're appealing? So it's been moved and properly speaking that. to the Very mic with Ms. Worthen, if y'all can find room. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying I ain't being funny, but just say I second it in between that pizza and I can move on. You second. You second the motion that the appeal she made. Okay, so it's been moved and second as it relates to the appeal. And I'll respond to it procedurally as the rules permit, and then I'll open up the floor for discussion. Then I'll have the last statement and we'll vote. Ms. Fields has got the discussion on a motion mixed up with what we call a special order when we change the agenda and put the discussion of the audit first. If Ms. Fields- Point of information. What's your point of information, Ms. Fields? Where is the chair understanding this is a special Ms. order? This Ms. was not Fields, a special Ms. order. Ms. Fields, you out of order. Let me finish what I'm doing and you can debate and discuss it when the chair finishes and you get the floor. Now, if you continue to use points of information and points of orders to get the chair to try to, to, to get the floor to try to argue with me, where's Mr. Metcalf? I'm giving you a warning. I'm going to ask that you be 
removed for disorderly conduct as a council person. You'll get your chance, but don't use points of information and points of orders frivolously to make an argument point. Let me make my argument, and as I say, we'll open up the floor. You'll get your argument points, and then I will close it out with the final argument, and then we'll vote. Now, you know them rules, so don't try to slick me, because I ain't buying it. You might can slick the people watching on YouTube, but not this chairman. I'm going to try to continue. She didn't appeal, and I'm talking to my colleagues, she didn't appeal on what's the most similar thing, Mr. Gary, you weren't here, but we voted on the agenda change. And the agenda change was requested by the chairman of finance to discuss the audit. Coincidentally, Ms. Fields wanted to discuss the audit too. Whether she knew I would put that as an agenda change or not is neither here nor there. We granted both opportunities. Now she's using the chair should let everybody speak before they speak. She got that confused with a motion. A special order, whether it's a certificate or of recognition to a youth, whatever council person asks it can speak. We don't even know if motions come out of this. So this is the chairman's request to update the audit. I talked to you earlier, Mr. Guerra, and um, you in class about 7 o'clock on Monday. That's why, Amanda, when you was discussing with Ms. Galloway that 5 o'clock, that's going to be a part end in seeing whose schedule permit. So Ms. Fields will get ample opportunity, but I'm saying the chair is right. This ain't no motion where the person with knowledge sit back and everybody talk and then the chair um, tells what they know. We done met with auditors. We got information. We got meetings set. She's wrong. So I'm going to be hoping that y'all vote yes in favor of the chair being able to come in and give y'all information before we hear from others. And so who raised their hand? Ms. Worthen, go ahead. I've heard Mr. May say countless times that the chair should let others speak before they do. And so it's all of a sudden changed because you're the chair. Uh, and <laughs> it's always the, you know, it's blame the victim. Well, what a waste of time. Well, the voice I've heard for three hours now is Mr. Mays, no one else. So blame us all you want, but you're wasting our time. Let us proceed and let council do the work. It's not Mr. May's show. It is a council meeting, committee meeting. We all should be speaking. Any more discussion on the motion, I do. on the appeal? Ms. Galloway, you got the floor. So Mr. Chair, um, you, you have a lot of information um, but this discussion has gone off track with the water shutoffs. Not that it wasn't um, in, re in reference to the audit, but Councilwoman Fields did ask to put that on the agenda. And usually when someone asks to put it on the agenda, they do get to speak. And once she put it on the agenda, then you said that works because I wanted to talk about it too. And so I, I, I am in agreement that there should be information shared, but the person that put it on, it, it does seem like there's a monopolizing of the time. And this is just about what is going on right now. So I just want to share that. Any more discussion on the motion, on the appeal? Mr. Guerra. Yeah, Speaking to the mic, you need to use the mic. It's being recorded. I know you relax coming off the campaign trail. It's hard. Speaking to the mic, please. Yeah, so uh, I, I wasn't here at the beginning of the meeting because of class, but after hearing that Ms. Fields requested it, you said that you would allow it because you wanted to speak on it too. I always thought it was precedent that the person who usually asked for it got the floor first. Um, just, just the way it's always been, and I think everybody would have the opportunity to speak, of course, but I just think that that person usually always gets the floor first when they ask for it, so. Any more discussion? 
from council members who haven't spoke, that would be Mr. Davis and Mr. Griggs. If I hear none, then I would close it out like this. Mr. Gary, you wasn't here. That's not factual. When you asked for agenda changes, I told him and had it wrote on my agenda before we got here. Told Ms. President Galloway, whether she admitted or not, that we would discuss the meeting. I told you, i wait till Ms. Fields quit trying to sell you. You ready, Mr. Gary? You, I want you to hear what she got to say while I'm talking. You ready? You called me today. I told you about the meeting we was trying to schedule for 5 o'clock next Wednesday. You told me that you are in class every Wednesday till May until 7 o'clock. I said, when we get here, regardless of what I had discussed with Ms. Galloway, I'll try to see if we can buy time, because I wanted everybody to hear the auditors when they came in. Ms. Galloway, since she throwing me under the bus, we discussed whether or not we should wait for you. And wait, you out of order, Ms. Galloway. That's your first one. So I'm in discussion. Everybody had a right to say what they want, but I'm going to talk facts. I discussed your 7 o'clock, and she leans more toward 5. I lean more toward a compromise of 6 or 6.30 or 6 more so than 6.30. Ms. Fields had no clue that I was requesting to communicate the audit as it relates to the documents that had been released, drafts, Final documents, 30-day turnaround, very important. Don't we gonna have state auditors in here if we don't discuss this? I have no clue what Ms. Fields is talking about, but I didn't take the chairmanship in order to deal with the most important thing or one of the most important things. Point of information. What's your point of information? Isn't it a fact that I said I would not want to wait until 7 o'clock on a Wednesday. Can we look at an Ms. alternative date? Ms. Is Ms. Galloway, you are out of order. That I, you using a point of information is deadly discussed, oh. and you out of order. I'm discussing okay. what happened between me, you, and Mr. Guerra, and you're not going to do what Ms. Fields do when you get told on. You use that point of information to get back in discussion, and you're out of order. No, I'm and I'm ruling you out of order. I'm not out of order. I done warned you, don't get put out. <laughs> is it funny? It is. It ain't funny to me. I'm trying to discuss and call the vote. You and Miss Fields and anybody that act like that is trying to use information to further argue and discuss your point. The fact of the matter is I had conversation with him that you didn't know about. And the fact of the matter is I'm not going to take a chairmanship and then be told to let other folks talk, particularly on audits and budgets, before I do. And I'm not going to let you get a motion mixed up with my job description. You and Ms. Fields is misguided. I don't have to chair no meeting and just be the last to talk. That's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard you and Ms. Fields articulate, and you can buy into it, uh, Mr. Guerra. You operate two chairs. I want you to call the meeting and don't say a word. That ain't my style. I'm a leader. And right now I'm a leader in finance. And I'm a political leader in this community. Ms. Fields, you or nobody else under my watch going to hijack information, particularly when we done read all week long press releases from the administration who don't conduct audit. So if you vote yes, it still ain't going to make me not talk. And if you want to raise your hand and handle the finances, you can have it. And you can run around all week, and I can be at home in my BVDs watching TV. Now let's see if five of them give it to you. Make a motion when we finish this appeals, Ms. Fields, and then if you get six votes to suspend the rules, we can legally get you in there. I might vote with you, because I'm not going to argue with you, Ms. Galloway, and Gary and them. Ain't no time frame on this, but now I'm going to be ready to call for the vote. Lazar, Ms. Green, 
and Mr. Woodson, I would be very careful. I'm getting ready to call for the vote. What you say, Ms. Green? Well, go. I'm giving you your first warning. You might want to stop talking right now. Now, you continue to argue. There he sat right behind you. Now, you want to continue with me, I'm going to ask him because I done just warned you. Miss Galloway, you out of order. It ain't your job to check the chair. It's my job to chair the meeting. If you got to go, Miss Galloway, just leave. But don't check me. Well, you're out of order. I hear you. You're talking. You ain't got the flow. Ms. Galloway, let me keep order and conduct this meeting. When you sit in the chair, you do it. But right now, you vote on an appeal that I was trying to argue and close out and ask for a vote uninterrupted. You interrupted with a point of order to try to say something when I told Mr. Guerra what I was doing and what you was thinking. So I know, what's, I know the politics of what's going on here. I wouldn't care if you vote with Kate Fields and them from now to the cows come home. You'll be voting wrong. A chair don't have to wait to last, particularly on giving information. If you vote yes, that means the chair can chair and give you information. If you vote no, this chair still won't wait to last because it ain't no rule nowhere. So I don't care how you vote, but I'm going to do my job. And when you get ready to pass it to Kate Fields, remember her and even them bucking for it. We voted for you for president, and you voting with them on rules that don't even exist. Yes, Point vote. of order, Mr. What's Chair. Your point? You are mixing apples and oranges, and I just want you to move forward Ms. Galloway, so we can vote. You Ms. are Galloway, not being fair. Let me say this to you. When you argue your point, you can argue it any way you want. When I argue my point, I can argue it any way I want. We're in a political arena. You ain't being fair speaking publicly like Ms. Fields is right. Now you can vote that she right. She's wrong. A chair can start a meeting out. We give information, and we don't have to wait for last. If we had to wait for last, I would never be a chair. Point of information. What's your point of information? Councilman Mays, do you realize that that is what you told me every single time I chaired a meeting? You misguided. You misguided. You got that wrong, and you got that wrong. And you stopped my closing. I'm about to call for a vote because you steady hearing what I say, and you don't understand. The chair is the last argument. You getting beat up so bad, you chiming in, talking about points of information, point out, you steady want to argue. The rules is they appeal. They second it. I make the opening argument. I call on y'all, which I did. Y'all could have still been arguing. The minute I make points, you steady chiming in in my closing argument, and you out of order. I don't care how you vote. I'm going to make sure if you vote yes, A yes vote means um, you believe that a chair don't have to wait the last on stuff that's put on the agenda as a special order. But this wasn't a special order, Mr. Guerra. It was a request. And it was clear that the chairman wanted to talk about the audit. And when the auditors would come in and get some particulars, we asked for Mr. Daly to be here. We asked for Amanda to be here. And I'm trying to take care of some business with Amanda. Because it's connected to the audit because the administration told her not to be here. And now, Ms. Galloway. You want to sit down for a minute? This might take a while. You sure? <laughs> she might need to sit down. Here. See, now you Mr. Palladino. That's your first warning. You're talking out loud and we conducting business. We ain't asking for no page. We say what? We didn't ask for no page. Now, if we can hire you as an intern or an usher, we'd be willing to do that. What you say? Ms. Pal Mr. Palladino, please. Please. Let us do our job. 
you done interrupted, and that's what's happening here. We could be done. I'm going to make sure I address everybody in the infant stages of my chairmanship, because if I don't, it will get out of hand. You have people from the audience running the meeting, people saying stuff and making up rules that ain't true. Are y'all straight on what a yes vote is and what a no vote is? Is there any confusion? Hearing none, all in favor of the chair's decision, raise your hand. All opposed, raise your hand. I guarantee you I won't be the last one to speak. I'm going to be the first one to speak in finance chair meetings. And when y'all think y'all can silence me, then raise your hand, and I'm going to help show you how to get this seat. Ms. Galloway, the appeal is over. We back on track. Amanda, do you know where we left off at? No, I don't. I think I can fix it. <laughs> Ms. Daguerre, what time? Can you make it to the meeting with the audit auditors? Or what time do you suggest you want us to carry on with you at 5 o'clock Wednesday? Is that all right, Ms. Galloway? Say, move forward. I say just uh, carry on at 5 o'clock. Okay. Make it when I can. Anybody got a problem with not being here at 5 or it's a conflict 5 o'clock next Wednesday? The auditors are being asked to come in. We'll confirm that tomorrow. Ms. Galloway? I just wanted to, um, to say to my colleagues, um, Mr. Guerra, I was open for a different day because if we start at 7 or 7.30, there's no telling how long we will be here. And so is there a different day that will accommodate? And maybe the, the audit findings are not a big deal. I think it's a big deal for all council people. And so I'm just trying to say, I don't want to start at 7 or 7.30 to dive into that and ask the public to be here to get their input on it. I was trying to be fair and see if there was a different date that may accommodate you. So you heard the question, even though she didn't say through the chair. Go ahead and respond. I would say uh, I would suggest doing it then on Monday before the meeting. Now this is where we at. Inez Brown, Inez Brown was given the task of scheduling it. The date Monday would be what? The 13th. What the auditors asked was that any date, I don't know if they said on or after the 13th, but they wanted at least to the 13th to get it together. So Monday is a council meeting, correct? You wouldn't have it on the same day as council meeting, the 13th, would you? Ain't Monday the 13th a council meeting? Yes. That wouldn't work, would it? Y'all thinking about that? And you don't want it to stay out there because of the 30-day time frame to try to correct these material findings and keep the state out is imminent. You understand? Y'all understand that? I wish it could have happened on the 3rd. I gave the auditors to the 13th, but you got a letter from the state saying we need to fix some stuff within 30 days. You want to pay for an audit, have the, have the authority under the charter to conduct the audit, and then turn it over to others who might intentionally fail on getting your documents in in a timely manner, and then you look like buffoons? This is serious business. My job is to keep the state out, even state auditors. Amanda, what did you tell me when I requested a copy of the letter dated January 2nd? You told me what? Um, that I was going to ask Mr. Edwards if we could give so it. Point of order. Point of order. What's your point? Did we complete the discussion around a date? We know the 13th ain't working. Right. <laughs> Unless y'all want to come in early so, and stay all so night. So there was a, a request maybe for no. Thursday. Is Thursday work for anybody? Ms. Galloway, everybody? why can't you just ask for the flow? You asked me a question, I answered it, was we finished, and then uh, you just took over. Go ahead, you got the flow. You a stickler for rules with Kate Fields? 
Ask for the flow. Go ahead. You got the flow. Schedule the meet. I thought you gave me the floor. Oh, I didn't. But, you know, you just asked me. I thought like a point, point of, of information. information. Did we settle that? Mm -hmm. I say no. The mm -hmm. 13th oh, didn't no. work. And I implied that y'all right. can continue point to talk about yourself. I'll get to your point of information when I finish this. What's your point? My point is I appeal to the ruling of the chair because the chair was monopolizing and not letting council talk. Somehow this segued into a discussion. That ain't a point of information. It is. A point of in, you out My of question field. is, Mr. Mitt, why man. didn't we proceed? <laughs> That's a long, that ain't no quick and Why matter. didn't we proceed with where it's we a, were in the discussion and agenda? This, How not, did it move into this? Now I'm finna get up and give it to you. <clears throat> and you can go ahead and do your thing. Because you gonna let these folk run you over and I'm chairing this meeting. I will be back, but I'll take a break before I cuss. If you wanna roll with them, roll with them. We said you would change after the election and you're living up to it. But you were trying to cater before the election and cater for them votes. Now, I'm not going to argue with you and her back and forth, and she done told you she's one of Mr. Mays, Mr. Mays, your point? you need to operate in a professional manner. This has nothing to do with the election. It is about your behavior today. And so you lost an appeal, and so you should not be talking. That's it. And you can turn it into the election and the votes, but that's over. We're talking about actions today on the 8th of January. And so if you're going to leave, then leave. This Amanda, is wrong. go ahead and relax, because this is crazy. This is Let me say this, Ms. Galloway. I'm going to be wrong. That's what politicians do. When a chairman got the floor and you teaming up with Kate Fields now, Ms. Galloway, you out of order. Now, Mr. Metcalf, can you come forward? You've been warned. You I appeal appeal the decision of the chair. What you appealing? I'm Close appealing you making me out of order okay. when you are disrupting. Okay, then that's an appeal of the ruling of the chair that Ms. Galloway is out of order. Ms. Fields. I second the It's appeal. been moved and second. Now I'm going to go first. I want you all to listen to these and rules clearly. The chair argues the appeal first. Then he asks every council person to chime in on their arguments of the appeal. And then the chair argues last. And then he calls for the vote. Everybody understand that on the council? I, will, I said it more so for the public than the council. But that's the procedure. An appeal is made, properly second. The chair argues the appeal. Any council person can argue. At the end, the chair goes the final argument and call for the vote. Ms. Galloway then appeal the ruling of the chair as finding her out of order. Some council people believe that the president can call the chair in order or take over. That's what they used to do with Herb Winfrey, Ms. Fields now. Herb, you can't handle Mays. <laughs> Ms. Winfrey can't, I mean, Ms. Galloway can't neither. And she ain't going to be chiming in, howling and talking to me out of order after being warned. And the first warning, she admitted she was wrong. She wrong now. But the second warning, get her removed. Ms. Galloway and everybody else done got me removed from meetings. She's not immune. I wouldn't care what her title is. I'm the chair. I don't discriminate. We subpoenaed, and I can't do it by myself and won't be in this position by myself. Subpoenaed Mr. Gilcrest, fixing to ask today for subpoenas, or Clyde Edwards, Mayor Weave, I mean Mayor Neely, and everybody else who telling folks not to let this city run right. My position is this has changed since we said, I'm going to vote Galloway president. I predicted it that they catered in the Kate Fields and them, and Kate Fields and them raising their hand, causing chaos with this chairman, and then wasted a whole lot of time. The administration laughing. Ms. Fields meet with Mayor Neely more than I do on these issues. Eva Worthen in press releases from Marjorie Raymer about the audit. Point of order, and there's no relevance to the appeal. Ms. Fields, you're out of order. I'm you are out of order, What's Mr. your Mays? point? 
You know, you got to wait till I say what's your, your point. Your discussion is not you relevant to field. the appeal. You say point of order, and then I say what's your point. You don't say point of order and keep talking. You say point of order and wait to get recognized. This is your second or third warning, because y'all think y'all know the rules and don't. I'm going to tell y'all how to do that. You say point of order or point of information, and you stop. When I recognize you, then you tell me what your point of information or point of order is. So this council is out of order, and I'm not going to be a part of it. And I know I'm 100% right. Anybody in the public who doubts what I'm saying, I'll give you a copy of the rules. They're right here. They eating pizza and having a ball, and I'm trying to take care of multi-million dollars worth of business. And here I'm teamed up in a quagmire with folks who voted for leadership, and now they voting with the minority party and the minority party having a ball publicly eating pizza, and we trying to take care of the business of the city. I knew it was coming right after the election. People be right on their best behavior before the election. When the election is over, true colors come out. Now, here we go. Miss Galloway be out of order. She was out of order saying point of order and howling in the mic. Point of order and be quiet. They just don't know. It's sad that folks don't know. Ms. Galloway don't know. The people voting with them don't know. Mr. Griggs don't know. Maurice, he said get a mayor more time. I wanted a subpoena last week, week before. You know why? Because I'm evidencing that folks telling people don't come up here. They're going to run the city in the ground financially. And my job is to protect the purse strings, protect the checkbook, see who's fired, who brought in, who's sworn in, who's handling money. Mr. Daly, I see you here at our request. You ain't been sworn in. What you do? Where your job description? The charter says we should have a job description of every employee and we should know the day that they came on. And so I don't care who watching what. I won't be caught up in the game. And I don't back down from nobody, because I know right from wrong. Now I'm going to open up the floor for discussion, because guess what? They said I'm out of order, and they mad because I'm calling council people in order, and this close from removing them for trying to catch me up in a trick bag. Miss Fields having a ball, Monica Galloway done bought into it. I don't need favor from Miss Fields and Griggs and none of the rest of them. I rely on the people who vote for me and my ward and right and wrong, and I pray to God on my knees. Miss Galloway, you got the floor. Thank you, Mr. Mays. First of all, even before, since you mentioned, even before I even decided on the election, I had chosen your leadership because I believed what you said, how you said you were going to behave. And so, Mr. Mays, regardless of what you're saying, I don't have to support your behavior. And we have talked about the different things in private. And now you are continuing to go on and on and on. And so this is not about anything but what is not being done fairly here today and the rules are being followed now because i am trying to speak out you have decided that you want to remove me and that's fine and i really believe that you can do this right it has not been done right and i am not going to pretend like everything is good i don't have to build an allegiance when the behavior is wrong. You have been talking. There has been someone that hasn't had the opportunity to speak. Today was not the day to talk about the shut off notices. This was not a day to ask Amanda about this. This was supposed to be a quick discussion about the audit before the public got to speak. And so it hasn't gone on. And so now, since I'm operating in what you know is wrong, you're turning it, spinning it, doing whatever you want to do about it, but I'm not going to be removed from the meeting because I am not out of order. You lost an appeal. And you still, even in, when you spoke, you said, if I lose the appeal that says that I'm not going to speak, I'm still going to speak. 
That's out of order. You're out of order. And so I'm just asking you to give your colleagues and this community the ability to speak like the, the agenda says. Just do what's right. Be the leader that I know that you can be so that we can really get to the business. We've been here three and a half hours and we haven't gotten to the public speakers, which is the fourth thing on the agenda. And so I ask that my colleagues support the appeal that I did. Any other discussion from any other council? Hearing Mr. Garrett, hearing none, I'm going to do the closing arguments on this appeal. Ms. Galloway, let me say this. Mr. Garrett wasn't here. You should know better than anybody sitting up here that I told you that I was going to come and discuss the audit. Everybody in this community should know it's folks on their Facebook page, Mr. Woods and them releasing documents that's coming from the administration prior to coming to us. You know it. We didn't discuss it. Right. I'm getting calls from Gina Luster, you and everybody. I was asking her about the January 2nd. Mr. Woodson, I can hear you laughing way up here and stuff ain't that funny and I know it's a game. You and Miss Green. So if Miss Galloway done got the police out of here because she don't want them arresting her, I don't see now police in sight. I noticed the police came up here and then they gone. I done warned folks and I don't know where Metcalf at. Mr. Metcalf, you said that if you wasn't in the room, you wouldn't operate. I've asked that if you're going to work this council meeting, you're in the room, but different if you can see it back there, then carry on. But I just don't want folks to think this is a game. And I ain't playing a game. And I want y'all to understand politics, Ms. Galloway. I don't play with my politics. I don't play with evil word than showing up in a press release from the administration with Marjorie Raymer. She can't just get in that press release. That's Clyde and the mayor putting her comments in there. Don't y'all know 101 politics? She laughing. She in the mayor's press release down in this council, particularly you, and you voting with them. You don't tell me to wrap it up, Ms. Fields. This is my argument. I'm telling on you. I'm looking at you in and out the mayor's office, Ms. Fields. I know the politics of this mayor. I know the mayor is telling folks, and Ms. Galloway, Herb Winfrey ain't here. Jerry Winfrey Carter ain't here. We ain't got five votes. And if we had them, as long as you continue to vote with the people who are doing a nasty press release on you, 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 you gave them the copies of the audit. You voting with them, they raising their hand, want they spot, because they couldn't get it by votes. We won by votes, president, finance chair. If you look at the record, I had four votes, you had one. I just said, keep voting for you. I'm going to block them. Now the vote is over, guess what you're doing? You're trying to block me and embarrass me, because I'm going to keep order if I'm chairing, and I'm going to talk about financial business and I ain't going to let the state come in, whether it's Eric Scorsoni giving orders unauthorized or whether it's state auditors and letters that you can't get. I'm in the middle of asking her who ordered her not to get a letter. She's saying Clyde Edwards and Neely. If Gina Luster don't show me the January 2nd letter on Facebook. Point of order. Mr. Mays, you are so far away from discussing this appeal, it's not funny. You've had your opportunity to speak. You are once again monopolizing the entire Ms. conversation. Mills, you are out of order trying you to, are out of order, order Mr. to Mays. take the flow. You need to wrap up and let us vote on this appeal. I'll let y'all speak, y'all, if y'all want to speak. Y'all done argued you couldn't get the flow. Even when I was speaking before, I would say anybody want to speak. But when I get to talking good, that's when you can't handle it. Remember that TV show where they, that guy was sitting up there and he said, you can't handle the truth. That's why y'all keep chiming in as I keep spitting out the truth about you, her, and everybody else. Y'all can't handle the truth. Now, I said I would do the closing arguments 
and we would vote. I don't care how you vote. I know right from wrong. I know politics. You want this finance chair. Neely and them want you to have it. A bunch of people do. That's why I'm glad I see your hand go up when I say you can have it. I know politics. Y'all couldn't get the votes. All you can do is cater to Ms. Galloway, Maurice, Herb. You can't cater to me. I ain't studying you. I'm in order. And I'm going to be in order as it relates to the politics of the business of the city of Flint. I'm a Democrat, not a Republican. I ain't endorsed by Republicans. I know every precinct that voted yesterday and voted for Weaver and Neely. What's your point? Well, there's a filibuster, a realibuster, a millibuster. It's the truth. And when y'all try to rule me out of order for telling the truth and talking about financial business and letters and deadlines that could bring the state in here. I make a motion to remove Mr. Mays from this meeting immediately. You out of order. You didn't have oh, a Oh, no, Mr. Mays, you are out of order. You out of order. That's your third one. Point of order. Uh, Mr. Metcalf, I want... Eva removed. Point of Eva. order is a What's privilege motion. What's your point? Because she showed in court. Can you please state the appeal? Ms. Galloway, you can't give her the flow. If you got one, you can do it. You ain't going to coach and run this meeting from your seat. It's my appeal. I said, please. I'm wrapping up. She took the flow to and up. tried to make a motion to remove me. Y'all all out of <sighs> order. And you wrong for trying to condone it. It's like the Democrats and the Republicans. Here they trying to help folks throw me out. And I gave up four votes to her one for president, and it lasted one month. It lasted one month. And everybody across town said she going to double cross you. I said, I said I'm going to see you. I didn't believe it. You out of order. Mr. Metcalf. If we have to break up a quorum, can you remove Point of order. That? What's your point? Oh, we are in an appeal. And so your time is up. And so I want you to repeat the appeal so through. that we can vote. I'd have been through if you and Miss Fields are set up and just take what Mr. I'm telling Mays, you. Mr. Mays, you're, you're, you're so you, you're, you're, you're point of order and point Mays. of information to take the flow. But I gave y'all your argument. When I make mine, y'all can't handle it. Point of order, Mr. What's Mays. your point? You know, any chairperson can rule a person out of order according to you and the rules. Um, any council person can appeal it, whether I rule a citizen out of order or another council people. As long as y'all so got five votes, they won't get through out. You don't want to get Let's through go. out, keep voting with them. Let's I done go. been through out plenty Let's times. <laughs> now I'm going to finish my argument and call your, for the vote. Your time is up. Ms. Galloway, y'all done interrupted time no and you out of order. Mr. Metcalf, I don't have to argue with her. Mr. Can you come and ask her to politely leave? No. And if Eva point of get out of Morgan three point point of information. What's your point? Y'all not going to make a mock out of me. I'm going to remove you. What's your point of information? Would my colleagues like to get up and leave so we don't yeah, have to do that. Because he is, Go ahead. That's he is so business. far out of order and no, out of bounds. I don't know that we have any other choice at this See, point. Now, she out of order. If y'all want to get up and leave, I'll wait till you leave. And when it ain't five here, it ain't no quorum. Go ahead. Is that what you really want? That's what she suggests. Y'all out of order. Mr. Metcalf, come start picking them off Arrest one by one. Arrest us all, Mr. Metcalf. This don't make no sense. What? Mr. Mays, come on. You, you're wrong. You already used your time up. Order. Point of order. Order. Let me get order in this meeting. Now, how y'all want to do it? Y'all want to cut? Y'all want? Y'all need? Y'all need help from the public to be out of order? Cause they enjoying it. I know who they is. Mr. Gary, you had some. Go ahead. I just would like to vote on this issue, and I would encourage us to to get through with that, and then. You exactly right. We in the middle of an appeal, closing arguments, and call for the vote. And Ms. Fields, whether they like what I say or Ms. Galloway, every time I say something that hit them hard, 
they interrupt and it get crazy. So let me hit hard like y'all trying to hit me and then we'll vote. And you sit there and you take it because I'm not going to let y'all talk about me. Miss Galloway, there you go again. See that, Mr. Metcalf? She shouldn't be interrupting when we're trying to close it out. Neither point one of information. What's your point? Councilman Mays, how do we get you in order? Um, you, can, you can do it one or two ways. Learn the rules and then don't use them to get the flow to argue a point when I'm making final arguments as the chair. And then get the votes. Y'all can vote right after this appeal. It's to vote time to, to vote. Miss Galloway, you out of order. That ain't a point of order, a point of information. You trying to tell me <laughs> something and still ain't caught on that you don't run me like that. The, the quicker you sit there and be quiet, you and Miss Fields, then I'll finish my arguments and call for the vote. Every time y'all distract me, you might add another two, three minutes on. That's sit so and take sad. it. I'm not. Well, get up and leave. Just, just, you got just choices. Finish. Just finish. Not when you're talking out loud, trying to show off. Just sit there and be quiet. That's what I do when y'all talk. But you can hear you, ah, uh, damn, ah. Uh. Just be quiet sometimes. And it go quicker. Can you do that? Y'all get your game plan together. Well, I do too. I want y'all to be quiet and let me finish my argument and, add, and call for the vote. And you steady talking. It's a distraction. We can dance together, but we ain't going to all talk at the same time. So now we got, yeah, we ready? Here we go. Anybody come in here with a concerted effort like Ms. Fields and everybody jealous want to be chair and interrupt and try to come make confusion when Ms. Galloway at the fifth vote teams up with them, Mr. Davis, Winfrey, they're a little softer than me. I ain't out of order. I'm in a political arena that's a knockdown drag out. I ain't impressed with Mr. Neely. I ain't impressed with none of what's going on, which geeks these people up to come down here. But what I will show you is the real people coming down here. I'm going to show you more than this people coming speaking up about what's going down here in City Hall. So y'all can vote right now, because I'm finna call for it. And then you can play to this little handful of people, and I'm going to show you real folks and numbers in the city of Flint who's watching this meeting now, looking at the votes. Now, this is how it go. If you vote yes, then I'm going to conduct this meeting. If you vote Point yes, of order. What's your point, Ms. Galloway? Mr. Mays, uh, this is an appeal because you, uh, you are removing me from the meeting. That's correct. You need to be removed. And so if you vote yes, I'm going to run this meeting without your interruptions, misfeels, or whatever. But you're not going to vote to throw yourself out. Point so, of order. Ms. Galloway, we have to vote. And so what's your point? Point of information. Isn't you the vote to no, not no, remove up, me up, from the meeting? So you saying Is the vote to, to not remove me from the meeting? Isn't that my appeal? You voted you shouldn't be removed after you done violated five times. Yeah, that's your appeal. And I'm saying if you vote yes, you and nobody else should be able to act like that four, five times. If you vote no, then I'm going to act like how y'all act. That's how it works. You, you appeal whether or not I can run a meeting and call people out of order. And when it got to you and your removal, for the first time in your life, you say, I appeal. I don't want to be removed. Your buddies say, I second it. And so that's what we finna vote on. If you vote yes, you might be removed. If you vote no, you stay and we keep rolling. But you were dead out of order. All in favor of the chair's ruling that Ms. Galloway was out of order, raise your hand. All that believe she wasn't and should stay, raise your hand. Then she stays. Now let's proceed with the meeting. Um, I'll give you the flow, Mr. Guerra, but I'm not going to give it to you yet. Oh. What I'm going to do is this. They think when they say your name, you got all this is a heck of a crowd that don't understand chairmanships and rules. You go to Washington and try to get the flow. This is the legislative branch. Mr. Woodson, we don't need that. 
Miss Galloway, Miss Gala don't get the flow before you. We shouldn't even hear you now. You right. My position is this. I hope they make a motion to remove me or get me out this seat. Because I know Gara, I know Fields Nim, and I know Galloway and the rest of them. You got the flow. I make a motion to suspend the rules in regards to chair leadership. That's uh, and looking in the rule book, that's uh, 4.3.1, 3.2. So it's been a motion properly made to suspend the rules as it relates to the chairmanship, this particular chairmanship or all of them? Finance chair. Finance chair. Ms. Worthy. I second that. So it's a motion on Mr. the floor to suspend the rules as it relates to finance chair. Any discussion? I got some. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Davis. I didn't see you move. I thought that nobody had none. I'd like to say this. It's getting late. City business is not getting done. The first meeting of the year, 2020. We raised hell to get the administration up here. I'm looking at Ms. Trichelle, Clyde, Mr. Daly, Ms. Burns and the rest of the purchasing, everybody sitting here. This is the first day of the year. This body is a sad body. We raise hell, we want to subpoena people. My question is for what? Councilman Mays, I'm not here to, to backdoor you, I'm not here to play. I'm not here to even vote you out of your seat. That's not my spiel. My spiel is this, if we really gave a damn about the city business, why we ain't doing it? If we really serious, this is the first day of the year, hostile environment, we ain't getting nothing done. From Mayor Weaver's administration to Mr. Neely's administration. After a while, you start finding out the problem is not the administrations. The problem is this damn body. We got to do better. We supposed to be grown. People elected us. We just had an election yesterday. Why do y'all knock at people's doors when you're going to do silly barroom stuff in a professional municipal building? This is not cool. People worked all day and they're still sitting here this time of night. We ain't respecting nobody. The community, the, 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 the administration, we ain't respecting ourselves. What the hell is wrong with this body? I'm serious. What's wrong with us? I'm wasting my time sitting here. This is, is, is foolishness. We're eating pizza. We're doing everything but handling business. Somebody need to do something better than this in a hurry. And I thank you for yielding the floor. Anybody, anybody else want the floor in this discussion on a motion for reconsideration? Seeing none, I'll chime in. Let me say this. This is by design. It's by design. It ain't foolishness to me. It's necessary. When you look at the political landscape, this is by design. In my opinion, Mr. Davis, they could care less if it looked like chaos. I'm the one who sent the emails and the memos out to get these people here. I want to get to communicating with Amanda in front of the public, John Daly. We getting a call from Yolanda Brown as it relates to the pay between Rob Benzik and what's the deputy, sir, what's your name? Just holler out. Craig. Craig and Mr. Daly, it's issues there. I also did not just ask for Mr. Daly and Rob Benzik and Clyde, and I see him just eating up what you're saying. I also asked for the real leader, the mayor, for over 60 days. So I ain't here to waste your time or nobody else, Mr. Davis. I ain't even here to waste the public time. But I will demonstrate some things politically. When you got Ms. Fields raising her hand, want to be finance chair, when you got Ms. Fields, Santino Guerra, Griggs, and Eva Worthen endorsing and meeting, more so than the leadership, regardless of what you know, I'm telling you, you're in the middle of a messy political arena. And it's easy to work with folks, or it's, it's as easy to make them look bad. This is by design. I done chaired a many of meetings. This started back in the committee room. 
That's where it started at, if you think about it. I said from every meeting on, I'm not moving new business before public speaking. And I know Ms. Fields' um, political strategy. She want to discuss the audit. She want to set the narrative. I'm not allowing that. Don't y'all, y'all can vote with her to speak first. That's a game. Anybody in their right mind know that a president, a finance chair, or a vice president in these positions, we gonna try to set the narrative. It was five of us. Now here we go, letting other folks set the narrative. This ain't the only forum I got. You got a podcast. Do you know I can do a podcast? Do you know I can go on the show with Rem Thrill Kill and Dumas Nim? This ain't the only position, but you got folks out here playing games and trying to set the narrative. I won't be voting on a motion to reconsider leadership. You know why? Because I want to flush them out. Who want to be financed? Point I know of information. You What's your point of Is information? Is the chair aware that he's stating a vote to reconsider when it's a vote to suspend the rules? It's a reconsideration on the vote of who's going to be finance chair. However you word it, that's it's a what vote it is. To Mr. Spend Bill, the you rules. out of order. I didn't give you the flow. That's your fifth warning. I'm not going to argue with you. I asked, did anybody want to discuss this and have debate? Every time, Mr. Davis, I start talking, they can't handle it. I'm, they say they don't get opportunity to talk. I always say, do you want to discuss it? I said it in the back room, people sit up here like bumps on the law. And then when I start discussing, they want to debate and argue with me and just can't sit still. That's what's been happening. That's what the video going to show. I might be done now with the motion for reconsideration. They can't handle it. It's a game. It's a game. And it's all kind of folks looking at it. They get down here in front of this little crowd of eight or 12, the lobbyists, I call them, the, the people moving around, cheering them on, and they go to working out. So y'all know what the vote is. The motion, Ms. Galloway, you want the flow? Go ahead, I seen your hand. I see everything, well, what you raise your hand for? Let me get back to where I was at. If I didn't respond to her raising of the hand, they just said I was wrong. You did raise your hand, didn't you? You did, didn't you? And I seen it and recognized you just like I do everybody else. This is a game played by Worthing, Fields, Santino is in on it, and Griggs gonna go alone. And I don't care what Ms. Galloway do, because it's been four votes tonight where she voting with him. And it's coincidentally after the election. Um, it takes six votes to reconsider. Y'all ready to vote? Okay, I thought I seen your hand speak. So Mr. Mays, I'm disappointed that out of everything that's been said tonight, there has been no personal accountability for anything. I stood before this council before the election and said that I would not argue before this community anymore, that I wouldn't do it. And I've done my best to do that. Everything we do seems to be seen, according to you, as a political game Nothing is about public policy and just do everything has a political spin. Everything has a, a, a motive for um, self preservation everything. But nothing has been said tonight to say, you know what? Maybe I have talked a little bit more than I should tonight. And I will give my colleagues some time. And so I'm not going to be bound to behavior that when I was chair would never, was never tolerated, period. Every time I chaired a meeting, it was, stop talking, Ms. Galloway. 
You should be the last one. To stop. Why are you interrupting me, Ms. Galloway? So much so that in an effort to move business forward, I would often not resign my chairship, but step down from chairing that meeting in an effort to move the meeting forward, and immediately all appeals and everything went away. And that is on the record. And so, Mr. Mays, all I'm saying to you is there is a level of accountability that we all share. And tonight, you haven't owned up to any of it. Not any of it. It is almost 9 o'clock. And we have not gotten past the, the two items that were supposed to be short items. And so it's just wrong, Mr. Mays. You can, you can spin it any way you want to. It's just wrong. And as much as you're saying you appreciate the administration being here, nothing that has been demonstrated tonight says that. It's about actions. It's about behavior. But nothing says that, and all of them are here. And so I'm sorry. This has just been wrong, and I'm not going to be thrown out. I'm going to appeal any time someone tells me that I'm going to be thrown out. And then when the chair loses an appeal, even though that's supposed to modify and change behavior, the chair decides that even though they lose the appeal, they're going to do whatever they want to. That's lawlessness, and we cannot tolerate it. Ms. Galloway, let me ask you a very serious and important question. Could it be by design that Ms. Fields Nim is creating chaos so we can't talk to John Daly and people? You ever thought about that? This stuff started in the back room, and you start voting with them in the back room, giving them credibility when they start making that stuff. Have you ever thought about we in a political arena? I got very important questions for John Daly and Craig. I got in, they done put a motion to do something else. I was, as I gave, I was asking Amanda questions that I know the public was glad to hear. I don't buy into no business being taken care of. I guarantee you the public was glad to hear no shutoffs. Regardless of the public glad to hear no shutoffs, I guarantee you I'm still trying to get the January 2nd letter that got us under a 30-day time frame, which now might be down to 20, to correct the material findings in the audit. That's the business that's been attempted to be taken care of. So, Mr. Davis, Ms. Galloway, I ain't buying into the narrative that business ain't trying to be taken care of. But I am buying into the narrative of political blockers that you voting with in the back room on appeals that you heard Mr. Edwards has been telling folks not to come here. They laughing. You see John Daly here after two, three tries, and they trying to get him out of here unscathed. So don't tell me business ain't attempting to be taken care of. I don't have to get favor with Neely, Miss Fields, Clyde Edwards. I got a job to do. I'm the legislative branch. I'm the co-equal branch of government. I'm not a follower of the executive branch. People criticized me and said I wasn't treating Mr. Neely fairly. I requested a subpoena for Mr. Gilchrist in 30 days when he wouldn't show up. Look at the calendar. What's the date? This is January. I've been chasing Mr. Neely and these folks for over 60 days. Last time we was here, I was chasing them, and Mr. Davis and Mr. Winfrey said, give them more time. Well, we gave them time. They here. The motion should be to suspend the business of the meeting and talk to them before they leave. That's what the business should be. The word filibuster was used. How do you know Kate Fields and them ain't playing this? She wanted to move the whole new business up to the front. I say I ain't going to have it. I know they're here trying to get to them. They ain't the only ones here. Suzanne Wilcox is here. The purchasing director is here. And y'all can blow it with this nonsense, but I got a, 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 a meeting to chair. I'm the one asked them to be here. And I knew they would be here to camouflage for Neely not being here. Don't buy into the okie doke. The mayor is giving the orders. He throwing the rock and hiding his hand. Don't fall for the okie doke. Yeah, they're here. I predicted they'd be here. I predicted Eric Scorsoni wouldn't be here. 
I predicted Mr. Neely wouldn't be here. This is the okie doke. But I got some serious questions from Mr. Daly. Serious questions from Mr. Point Edwards. of order. What's your point? Isn't your five minutes up? Mr. Miss Get Miss Miss Worthy, you in on He's it too? Talk like three All minutes. you gotta do is vote. Watch this. I'm gonna call for the vote. Who said I'm talking for three hours? I, it took me. Go ahead. Well, it take me six years to run the city. You remember Kerry Nelson, um, Josh Freeman, Scott Kincaid, Jackie Poplar. You out of order, Joyce Wilson, from the Attorney General's office. That's your first warning. I've been, I've been involved in the city for over 30 years. I've been in elected office for six. I don't need you to tell me how it worked. I already know. And then seen politicians come and go. However long I talk, I ain't going to let the emergency managers come in if I can help it. I ain't going to let us get in a $12 million deficit. We got a $24 million surplus. Nothing to do with this administration. It went up $4 million from last year. So y'all ain't going to, these eight or 12 people who excited about the politics ain't going to run this city, not under my watch, get elected. Ms. Fields, get the majority of the votes. All in favor of the motion for reconsideration, raise your hand. It's a vote to reconsider the rules on chairmanship. That's exactly. No, it's a roll call vote. It's a roll call vote. You're right, to suspend the rules. All in favor of the motion to suspend the rules, raise your hand. It's not a roll call uh, vote. It don't have to be a roll call vote. Wait. Aye. And all against it, me. Now, the motions to suspend the rules Mr. have Chair. been. State your motion. You got the flow, Mr. Garrett. I make a motion to replace and remove Mr. Mays as finance chair and special affairs chair and replace him with Kate Fields. I'm a, I'm it's been moved and Ms. Worthen and Mr. Griggs. Y'all take y'all pick on second. I'll second. Oh, she last passed it to Mr. Griggs. So it's been moved and properly second to remove me as finance chair and replace me as finance chair and special affairs chair with Kate Fields. Miss, what, Miss, um, what's her name? Miss, don't say nothing, nobody. Uh, Miss Galloway, you got the flow. So I won't support that motion. Um, I will say that the president gets to choose chairs. And so, just so you guys know, I'm not supporting that. I will support the removal, but I'm not. Point of information. I'm, I'm not taking away the opportunity of the president. Point of information. Mr. Woodson, if you want to coach and holler to them, come up here and whisper to them if they allow you, but don't howl out in this meeting. Y'all out of order. You and Joyce Wilson, and I don't care what the Attorney General's office said. Now, Mr. Mr. Um, Metcalf. I said that I'm not going to support that because the rule says that the president gets to choose the chair. And so because of that, based on how it's Point of voted, I won't do it. Point of information. Are you aware that's why we suspended the rules? It's also the president who makes the appointment in the first place, so we suspended the rules because clearly- Mr. Guerra, just wait to get the floor. Yeah. That ain't no proper that point of information. So you you use that to say. get the floor you to do your order. One rule, hey, Mr. Ms. Ms. Galloway, y'all out of order going back and forth, please. So just so you know. Don't y'all get it? Point I mean, suspend the rules and just talk, and I won't have to even monitor this. But don't try to jack somebody up for not following the rules and y'all butchering them. Most of information. What's your point, Ms. Who Capri? does Ms. Galloway want to be finance chair? Y'all are in the discussion. Hold on, Mr. Griggs. What's you you gonna get the floor. Just take the floor. Raise your hand. I'm finna call on Ms. Worthy. Okay. But y'all ain't gotta do points of information, uh, debate and argue. Y'all butchering the rules. Okay. Mr. I'm, I'm, Griggs, if you want the floor, you got it. Okay. 
I'm going by what Ms. Calloway said, that she would support removing you as a chair, but she wouldn't support electing uh, or replacing you with uh, Kate Fields. And my question is, who does Ms. Galloway want to replace Mr. Mays? Who? Anybody, Mr. Griggs, I would ask that you go through the chair, but you know, y'all ain't gonna know the rules and follow them. All right, then through the chair to Ms. Galloway. Okay, who does Ms. now Galloway, you're talking. Who does Ms. Galloway want to be uh, finance chair? Ms. Galloway, you want to answer that? Hey, he's like that. Ain't you noticed he I'll ain't with him? Um, Ms. Fields okay. want the flow. Not Ms. Fields, you are so recognized. As Mr. Guerrero stated, that was the point of suspending the rules, Ms. Galloway. It would allow us to make this motion and to, to do that appointment this way. And at this point in time, I would like to call the question. I'm not going to entertain that at this time. I'm going to let everybody discuss, including me. You can appeal if you want to, but I'm not recognizing that, and we're in the middle of discussion just because you want to play that bulldog politic game. Did you have something you wanted to say? And I'm going to speak on this. I'm used to politics, Ms. Fields. Now, go ahead, Ms. Worthy. Ms. Galloway has stated that she would appoint herself as finance chair and my response would be then we can also suspend the rules and reconsider our vote for president. Uh, sure I, I'm can? sorry, you sure can? but that is, that is ridiculous. That, I'm sorry, but that's not leadership, Ms. Galloway. Make the motion. If you got it, Mr. Davis, go ahead in this interesting political discussion. Thank you for acknowledging uh, Mr. Councilman Mays. I like to say this. I don't know if my colleagues really realize what they're doing up here. Y'all really don't realize what y'all are doing. If this city gonna get business done, Councilman Mays be the last one you want to agitate at the beginning of a year. He could do more damage from this chair than all of us put together, as you can see. So you might want to reconsider some things. Every problem got a solution. How, remember how you treat people. Councilman Mays, I beg of you, because see, you savvy at, at politics, and that, you say you're a politician, and you know politics, I respect that. But my colleagues don't know the damage you'll do from this chair without even sitting over there. That's we right. all know that, the public know that. That's right. He ain't been over at that chair but a few months now, and you can see he know how to handle either one. So if we're gonna get city business done, let's try to do it in a unified way. We got the administration sitting here, Let's try to get some business done. But the thing of it is, is this. You reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. We reaping, we, what we sowing, we getting it back, but it's not right. We want the administration being here, but you can't do every damn thing under a oath, uh, under subpoenas. That's, that's hostile. I got to treat people the way I want to be treated. I beg of you, Councilman Mays, senior Councilperson Mays, as well as the rest of the senior people on this body. We got to change our attitudes toward how we do this. When next two years, whenever the election comes, I'm sure it's automatically going to change because the public got a say again. Recalls ain't the answer. But you have to choose to do right by the people that elected us. Councilman Mays, you could chair a meeting like nobody else can. Wouldn't you choose to? But when somebody aggravates you, it's a problem. It's a problem because whatever happened in the election, it was hostile. We have to let it go. The election is over with. Right. But hell, we're still in the election cycle. <laughs> Absolutely right, but we in an election. That was a little loud. Mr. Woodson waved white flags. Mazan white flags. Joyce even, she wasn't even speaking to me. I don't know if she still is, but it don't matter because we're all grown. But what I'm trying to say is this. People elect us to get a job done. W Mr. Mays, you came up with the program of, of trying to get houses back. That list of 1,200 houses still sitting out there. People still losing their house. People ain't making it. We talking about uh, 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 Amanda with the water cut off. People can't even pay their water bills. We're up here clowning. We got to make a, 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 a orchestrated decision to do right by the people. 
We had elections. Some council members, you know, wanted to move up the ladder to the state route. But we have to choose to do right. Councilman Mays, I beg of you, I beg of you, whether you up there or sitting here, you can make life hell. I promise you, I know what I'm talking about. He know enough about politics to make, just like Mr. Woodson know how to make life hell if he want to. There's people out here know what they're doing when they come to politics. I respect that. But I'm going to do like Councilman, I'm going to just hold on one second. But Councilman Mays, I beg of you, as a community leader, senior council person, let's change our attitude. Point of information. Yes. Can we talk back and forth? Yes. Is Mr. Davis, and then I'm going to let you go back and forth. Mr. Davis, you got to understand what's by design. And you got to understand, you voted to give the first step to suspend the roof or whatever as it relates to this. So I don't talk one way and do something else. You're 100% right. This is the infant stages. It started in that back room today. We done conducted many meetings. And I'm telling you, the easiest thing people can do is create confusion. It ain't about subpoenaing people. We first sent emails and correspondence for people to come up. Yes. If they don't come up in 60 days, it is time to ask for a subpoena. You and Herb said no. When they get up here, the city administrator walked up in a public meeting and called me a liar. I got the information from Ms. Galloway, because you know I don't deal with emails, that the email that Woods and them was posting came from Edwards. It wasn't just Ms. Galloway, I staffed Jennifer. They showed us how emails come from people. And I said it originated from him. He said it went to two or three more people. In other words, it might not have come from him. It originated. He called me a liar. It started in that back room. It's by design. Continue to talk, but as you appeal to me, I'm already level-headed and smart. And I'm telling you right now, on this first vote, you bide in with them. And I'm like, what? Well, well, well right, but it's called misunderstanding. It started way before that. It started in the election. Because I noticed the, the like you say, uh, your mannerism is permissible in a court of law. When Mr. Edwards first approached, I felt tension. Not for me, but between you and the administration. I have to let that go. But and you, like, but you say we could, but you understand he the one been taking the fall for giving the orders of folks not to come. I, I understand. And point. So it is some point. tension. Ms. What's Fields, your point? Ms. Fields. What's your point? Ms. Fields. Okay, but Ms. Fields. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm ruling. Ms. Fields, you done made your point. You out of order if you continue. Mr. Ms. Davis, Fields, let me Ms. rule on her. Let me rule on her point. Don't say nothing. You can say through the chair and we can talk back and forth. The minute you believe that she right, y'all vote on that. We can talk back and forth. It ain't nothing in the rule that say we can't. So divide and conquer. She's wrong. I'm ruling her point out of order. Continue. Thank you, Councilman Mays. At all costs, we need to have this tension resolved today. This is the first day of the year, our first committee meeting. It would do the city good as well as the administration, us working in harmony to try to do the city business. We have to, maturity don't mean who wrong who. The bigger person is the one got wronged and still do right. That's hard to do. It's easy to be nice to people that's nice to me. Then I'm going to give you a proposal. Ask Amanda and Clyde to go run off copies of that January 2nd letter from the state about the audit and pass it out to everybody here rather than telling Amanda she can't give us a copy. Gina showed it to me on Facebook. So start there. Pop that out and run that test, and then we'll continue to talk. You still got the flow. Thank you, Councilman Mays. I feel like this. I feel like this, even with Mayor Neely absence. With him being a new mayor, you want to try to get many things you can done in a city that's hurting like us. I'm listening listen to the lawsuits. They, we're catching hell with that. I'm listening to the county with the schools. We're catching. We got a, a long ways to go, a lot of fires to put out. 
but we could get them out if we all working in one accord to do that. But if this body for once just say, look, it ain't, when I sit here, it ain't about me. It's about the people I'm elected to do. I get mad personally, I just take a deep breath and let that go. It ain't worth it. I let it go. But it's imperative that we work with this administration if we're going to do anything. We out of check and balances, they're the administrative branch. Mr. Mr. Davis, it's imperative that not only we work with them, but they work with us. Absolutely. It's a co-equal branch Absolutely. of government. It ain't we got to bend over backwards. No. Well, I'm just responding yes. to you. Don't put that out there. We got a job to do, and they got a job. Continue. But it tends to seem like when I give respect, I get respect. Me and Mayor Neely did not see eye to eye. I was adamant about Mayor Weaver. But as he won mayor, I respect him in the office of mayor, totally. And, so he, I, well, and he's that. called you in meetings on blight. Councilman Mays, I'm, I'm trying to make sense okay. of what I'm saying. A lot of people think I'm contacting back and forth, and I'm not. Because I don't need to be in no meeting. I know who I am. But Excuse I'm me, Mr. That. David. That's the type of stuff. Point of order. Point of order. I'm it's dealing a with a process. point of order right now. I'm going to point of order. Miss Fields doing Then deal exactly with it, please. Who are you talking to? That's you out of order because when you say point of order, I'm going to address this order first, then I'm going to come to you. But you're not you. addressing What's it, Mr. Chair. What's your point of order? My point of order, is this a therapy session or a council yes. meeting? Yes. Whatever it is, he got the flow. Listen, see, acting like a kid, you was not elected to be that. We're elected to be adults. The corn broke. This meeting is adjourned for a lack of quorum. I apologize to those who came. This meeting is adjourned for lack of quorums.